Marvel Superheroes Podcast. We're doing Marvel Superheroes Podcast? Yeah, we're doing Marvel Superheroes Podcast. The following program has adult language and potential spoilers. Listener, beware. I know that you don't like to talk about your life, but a guy with a freaking machete for an arm just chopped our butts in half. Who are you? Run it! On September 3rd, my father trained me to be an assassin. But that's not who I am. A Marvel legend. DJ Snake! Will rise. You got this! Thank you. You can't outrun your destiny. My name is Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Shang. 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 S-H-A-N-G. Shang. That's what I said. A Marvel superhero has arrived. Dr. America. Fantastic Four. Oh, Spider-Man. Iron Man. Hey everybody, welcome to Marvel Superheroes Podcast. I'm Illegal Machine, with me is... Diablo Frank. And... Let's fix it. And today we're going to talk about... The Magazine. The Magazine. Magazine. The Magazine. Magazine. Not Magazine. Mag... Mo- magazine? That's what I'm saying, no oh. Magazine. Oh, we haven't done an episode since you guys did Shang-Chi without me, so uh, we're doing a little catch-up. I think that there's a bunch of shit that's come out that doesn't necessarily rate a full episode of the show. Did you see Shang-Chi yet? I have seen Shang-Chi, yes. You have? I have indeed seen oh, Shang-Chi. Shit. Yellow Panther. Oh shit! That's uh problematic. <laughs> Play the Bloodhound Gang song over there. <laughs> aware that as part of Asian representation we're going to do the cheap Chinese knockoff of Black Panther. That's my take on that movie. I think I said that in the podcast. Did you? That for being it's the so, same fucking story. For being like, so wrapped. No, I, I didn't do the Black Panther thing. It was okay. being so wrapped up in we have to dis- divorce ourselves from the source material because it's so uh, cliche mm-hmm. and then to just do a bunch of cliche shit. Right, right. Uh, I but not just that. Oh. It's like it like literally looks like it was modeled after Black Panther. And I, I, we, I had issues with Black Panther. We had a whole podcast about that. But it's still a good movie. It's still well done. My problem is I wanted this movie that was going to focus more on the character Black Panther, who I'm a fan of, and not a bunch of people that I'm not so much into. But I respect it. They still drew heavily from the comic books. And even when they made radical changes to the characters like Nakia, the thing is Nakia doesn't translate. You can't really do Nakia in the movies because it's a 16-year-old who goes nuts and becomes a villainess because T'Challa wouldn't sleep with her. You can't translate that, especially not today. So if anything, they probably made corrections over the comic books necessary corrections in the adaptation to make a character like Nakia work in another medium in a way that she was not going to be able to work under other circumstances. Where with Shang-Chi, the, the, it was very much a contempt for the source material, just outright contempt. I understand you want to redeem it. I understand you want to get away from stuff that you found problematic and, and do your own spin. But you don't have a license to just create where the fuck you want to. And I'm sorry, but the filmmakers of Shang-Chi just are not as gifted as Ryan Kuglu. There's not a good as writer. And you can tell because they fuck and plagiarized Black Panther. It's basically the same shit. They invent a sister that never existed in the comic books. That got nothing to do with anything. Very similar dynamics, you know, where all of a sudden Shang-Chi is like kind of awkward and like he's got a sister who's like really like fucking keyed in and cool and gives him a hard time and shit. And the whole thing where like now he's from this, like he's not from Shangri-La and shit from the comic books, right? But now he's from this fucking ancient kingdom, this magical kingdom that's completely isolated that nobody can get to. And like you have the white guy who who, like in Black Panther, he's kind of a, a joke character, except toward the end when he contributes to the main narrative by piloting the ship to help in the Civil War. And then you have the white guy in kind of white, you know, Ben Kingsley isn't entirely, you know, he's the one who pilots their vessel through the, the forest to get to the Hidden Kingdom ship. Um, Mandarin fucking suck. And like you guys, not just you guys, but like in general, people kept talking about, oh, he's he's this great moral villain and they finally have a villain that's so sympathetic and they put so much into. He fucking suck. He's a... He's a piece of 
piece of shit. I don't, I don't believe in him. I don't feel for him. He tried to kill his own fucking son. He fucking sidelines his daughter. Why the fuck did the mom ever leave the magical kingdom for a guy like that? He fucking what? Okay, like take Black Panther. I had issues with women taking over that movie because the the title is Black Panther and it's the first Black Panther movie. I wanted it to be about the dude, but there was so much love for women in the Black Panther movie and so much respect. You know, I I I have to give it to them for creating these characters that people really feel strongly about it and love and want to see in additional movies who were expected to carry a sequel without Chadwick Boseman where this movie gives Shang-Chi a mom just so they can fucking fridge her you know how she she sucks she leaves the magical kingdom she hooks up with a guy who's a piece of shit she dies protecting her family from his piece of shit villains and then he goes back to being a piece of shit and a killer and he was probably always a terrible person if you're a terrible person you know you've got all these enemies out there maybe keep your fucking rings on you know maybe you don't ever leave your fucking family to fend for themselves while you're all fucking I don't know collecting firewood or some shit what the fuck was all that shit about remember those trailers for the guy who's playing Shang-Chi and he seemed like a fucking block of wood that dude was a fucking block of wood that dude was fucking boring and I know you guys had some issues with Aquafina. I like Aquafina, but I think part of the problem was she was acting like she was trying to carry so much of the load of that story I think I said that yeah. It was like she was like turned she's up just, to 11. Like, like, yeah, because she's trying to make up for the difference because this guy's got no fucking charisma in the movie. But I've seen him in other stuff. I've seen him on The King's uh, Convenience. Uh, he did. A, he recently did a, a little 20 minute short with the guy from The Daily Show, the dude with like the horrendous accent that's apparently legit. You know who I'm talking about? The the Chinese guy? You don't know what I'm talking so, about. It's making me very uncomfortable. Anyway, so he's in that and he's actually pretty funny because they play up him being like overly sincere and doing it for the community and blah, blah, blah. It's kind of cute. So he's able to do comedy. He he just decided not to for that movie and he's fucking boring without the comedy I don't think he's a particularly strong martial artist to be honest with you I didn't think the martial arts were that good I'm tired of these people who come in and decide that the, the comic book material well first of all what do you mean these people <laughs> I'm talking about movie people Hollywood okay. people alright let's, let's clarify you have contempt for the source material the same fucking way they had for, before Marvel the thing that we love about Marvel is people who love the material go in and do their best to adapt the material while updating it for a modern audience and for a broader audience yeah I th- and I uh, to, to, just to back one of that, you do you hear about how like uh, Robert Downey Jr. read like everything every fucking Iron Man comic, like all of them, instead of being like reading a couple and being like this sucks. Let's do our own thing. Yeah. Oh, anyway, keep going. Where yeah, and that's exactly what they do. Is they're like, oh, we we, we need we, like they, they, I'm glad they didn't call it Master of the Martial Arts because the martial arts in that movie pretty freaking lame. It's exactly like a fucking Jackie Chan movie from the 2000s. Like it's 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 the generic action movies where we're gonna do our little funny. Broad, big broad martial arts but we got a guy who's nowhere near as good at it as Jackie Chan and hold on Neil Young just showed up on my nest cam let me tell him we're not at home <laughs> yeah um, it's not engaging it's corny it's 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 crowd pleasing in the way that like at the lowest level you know it's like oh look we're gonna have the, the, the guy Kumail Nanjaj who who did the Eternals and everybody was fucking creaming over how fucking hot this dude was how fucking cut he was what an incredible thing he'd done to his body and then they get the fucking guy playing Shang-Chi his body's really not that good you know so it's like Wait, okay Wait, let's not body shame on okay I want more body shame but let's it's like why, Kumail, Kumail put in the fucking work to get his own movie that guy looked like a fucking Adonis give that dude his own movie this dude he needed to hit a little harder that guy maybe needed to train a little bit harder he was not he, in he needed, shape. The, he needed the Chris Evans horse he, he, tranquilizer he looks, he looks soft he looks soft um, not that particularly good martial artist not charismatic but the thing that gets me it's and it's the, the whole thing going into the movie that I was having a problem with I'm not saying I'm the biggest Shang-Chi fan in the world but the whole thing is he's Bruce Lee and his story Stories are Bruce Lee as James Bond. Any of those stories, particularly the stuff I bought uh, with Paul Galassi artwork. So you're talking about these super intense dude. That is not at all what the movie was. Yeah, the super intense dude, this dark fucking spy shit. He's got this whole group of people around him. He kind of was doing the whole uh, Alan Moore League of Extraordinary Gentlemen early on, where you got a guy who's like quasi James Bond or like related to James Bond. like, And you got like people who were, I think like Watson, like somebody related to Watson was in his group. And had this female person that he worked with. And they were like, they were a spy organization, basically. They, you have this international organization that his dad's running, and they're trying to thwart it. And he's not a part of these organizations. He's just so good at martial arts. They're like, okay, well, you're the son. You know you inside information. You're a badass. We're going to work with you on this stuff. But you've got this whole collective of people that are like trying to fight this international conspiracy. And so they're having these intense spy stories. Which and I know, they could and I know, have easily fit into the current Marvel universe. Right, exactly. Like, extremely. And, and, you know, like you you kind of wanted from Black Widow, you wanted them to do something kind of serious. You wanted them to do the, the intense James Bond and spy thriller they didn't do that we were grateful because Yelena was so awesome and so yeah. so good at comedy Ursa, that you wouldn't big bear. huh I, I love that line Ursa, yeah. you're a big bear yeah you, you you forgive them for not going 
for doing the Marvel shit, for doing the yuck yucks, because they did it really well. This movie tries to do the yuck yucks, does it terrible. It comes off as a generic mid 2000s action movie. It doesn't capture the feel of the comic books. It shows open contempt for the comic books. The stuff they add to it isn't very interesting. It's a ripoff of Black Panther. They even do the thing where, like, you know, Black Panther has that spiritual connection to his land where you've got, like, the spirit panthers and he's connecting with his, his, his family through them and shit. And then Shang-Chi's got the fucking dragon and he's connecting to his mom and the spirits of the kingdom through the dragon. It's such a fucking knockoff. It's it's just lame. And the thing is, I didn't hate it. I watched it. It's fine. I watched the tuxedo. I watched all that fucking kind of shit back in the day. I wasn't a huge fan. It wasn't for me, but it was fine. Watching Shang-Chi, it was fine, but I'm never going to fucking watch it again it, because it's not what I want from movies. And it's not what I want specifically from Marvel movies. And I expected a lot better. Actually, I didn't. The thing is, I expected it to be what it was and it was actually an even worse. Marvel. It was a worse example of what I thought it was going to be than I even thought going into it. Well, oh, real quick. Well, uh, my, uh, big think, about, my big yeah, complaint go. was I hate the fact that Razor Fist did not have both razors. On both yeah, oh, and he sucked too. He was I, such a cornball. Yeah, I, that, I always thought that was such a cool looking character that he literally had razors from his elbow up. And All had, he can do is fucking kill. Yeah. He can't fucking wipe his own ass. All he can do is fucking kill. <laughs> this guy smells like shit and he <laughs> yeah. kills. One of, one of my favorite stories of Razor Fist. Unless he can pull a Joe one. Rogan and suck his own dick, <laughs> he can't even do that. So he's got all his fucking rage and his fists are nothing what? but blades. Uh, wait, wait, you invoked wait, wait. his name, Neil Young's back. Hold on, let me stop. <laughs> what a, what the, I remember reading the story about Razor Fist where he's literally, he's a cutter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's cutting it because he's so full of rage and he only has hands for So I was kind of disappointed. It's like, oh, he has like one Razor hand. Yeah. So he's kind of like, I mean, but that's, that's kind of fucking douchey hand. That's on brand for these movies though, is they just find a random Marvel character yeah. out of a fucking Go. handbook and then that's just a guy. Yeah. I mean, that's... You know. Or they use the name. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, look. I, I think that's kind of what... I think we we just said yeah. it was it was okay. Yeah, I think okay. Our, yeah. We were just like, it's okay. You're I've just not as once. bad about it as I am, but we're all agree. It's really, really okay. You seen what? Black Widow five times. I love that movie. Oh, yeah. The Black Widow's way better than fucking Shang-Chi. Way fucking better. But if you look at the the scores and reaction, you would think it's the opposite. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. Well, I think it's very telling, too, because it was this big fucking victory for Shang-Chi to make the money it did during the COVID and shit. Which is, I think, what I did give... Like, I didn't care if it was good or not mm -hmm. because it got people out to the movie theaters right. and made some money for our poor AMC theaters. And then Spider-Man happened and it was just like, fuck <laughs> you. Gave yeah. them like a year's worth of fucking oh, income. Get... Yeah. yeah. Uh, Spider-Man showed that people care enough about Spider-Man to show up and I still to say the tune that's of just, $2 billion. I still say that's just Spider-Man, though. It just shows... Yeah. It just goes well, to show but, how it, great of a property Spider-Man yeah. is. Yeah. And then you... Look, well, Superman and wouldn't you bring be doing all that. three Spider Mans together. I, we're about oh to see God. Batman. Batman ain't going to do two billion. You don't think so? No, Batman's not doing two billion. And you, uh, until I heard about that runtime, I really wanted no. to see. I, no, three hour the, movie with Robert Pattinson's going to be. I don't want to deal with the fucking three hour down movie, man. I can't, I, especially I in a theater. See a three hour movie. I'm just wondering if it's going to be interesting enough to. Keep it, me. Is it rated R or not? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's PG 13. Oh, I think that was one of the sticking points. That. Uh uh. No, no, no. I don't want to see fucking creepy serial killer Riddler. I like the Riddler as a character, but that's too far afield from what I want to see from that. It's a Marvel superheroes podcast. Marvel. Well, let's not yeah, talk about it. But, but, we got a whole but, Batman but I, I want to see it, but I want to see it at home because it's too fucking long. Just putting it out there. Uh, so anyway, so there, there's my Shang Chi rant. Okay, good. So um, we got that out. Shall we move on? Do you, we, we've got to fucking spin the wheel. What okay. do you guys want to say? Like, what's, what's the next one? What about Hawkeye? This is the first Christmas we've had together in years. I love you guys. I'm making up for some lost time. Authorities are wondering if the masked vigilante who terrorized the city's underworld is back. The past is caught up with me. Should we be worried? No, no, it's nothing. I'll be home for Christmas. I promise. It's the most wonderful time. When I wore this suit, I made a whole lot of enemies. You're a Hawkeye. Who the hell are you? Some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer. Are you one of those people? It's the most wonderful. Hey, babe, I should be back in a day or two. Hang on a second. With the kids jingle bowing and everyone talking. Things have gotten more complicated. It's the most wonderful time. This 
this is too dangerous. Definitely not this one. You'll have to say definitely like that. Holy sh**. Your arrow's more dangerous than that one? Oh, just some Christmas. I haven't seen it yet. You haven't okay, seen Hawkeye yet? I haven't. Dude, I, there's so much to watch. I'm watching Bubble Fit. Bubble Fit. I'm watching. I told you, don't watch Bubble Fit. It's not even all the way out yet. Don't watch care. Hawkeye. Watching uh, fucking Peacemaker, which I'm actually starting to like quite a bit. I know it's not a DC thing. Um, what else? There's something else I'm watching. Didn't you watch, like, uh, what's the uh, Mongo Jerry, the uh, monkey one? We're going to get to that. Okay, well, I think it might be time to get to that. Because well, no, no well, well you and I are going to talk about Hawkeye then, because he's oh, okay. not going to be able to contribute to that. Oh, I'm, oh no. Do we wait, need him? Wait. Hit monkey? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. He's saving him. He said Hawkeye. Oh, okay. He said Hawkeye. Sorry, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have my, I don't think I took notes on Hawkeye because I thought we were going to talk about it sooner. But, uh, okay. Yeah. So you, you, of the three of us, you were the biggest Hawkeye fan. I thought Hawkeye, well, because he hasn't seen it. Um, I thought well, Hawkeye he didn't like, was, He's not a Hawkeye guy, though. Like, he's a character. I mean, yeah, yeah. My, here's my ranking of Disney Plus shows. It's still Loki, number one. I, I put Hawkeye, too. I thought it was more entertaining from top to bottom, uh, more consistent from top to bottom than Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which started out really, really good and then kind of and, and that's my number one by the way of the, of the Disney really? Plus shows oh, yeah Loki's way better oh, fuck yeah dude one. Loki just crushed I don't Produ- care. production value alone on Loki I, I just don't care about Loki as a character that's and, fine yeah. but I think even you couldn't stop but even you no no, no I, I, could, I could have not watched that show and I've been okay I watched that because Bikita yeah. likes Loki put the podcast back on you you were surprised how much you enjoyed no it. I, I liked it fine but if I'd missed it I wouldn't have missed it where I couldn't let go of Captain America and Falcon and I thought they did a really good job with it no yeah I enjoyed it Falcon Winter Soldier was good yeah I really enjoyed it yeah but uh, it petered they, out at the end. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Um, I, I loved all the Johnny Walker stuff. It was, it, I love that they were mining all that Captain America material. I'm a Cap guy, so they they they, they gave me the service. Anyway, I, I thought uh, um, Jeremy Renner was good as Hawkeye as usual. I liked. I thought the story was good. Um, I do think Jeremy Renner was overhated as Hawkeye. There's a lot of people that seem to gun yeah, for I him. I don't get it. And I, I thought just he doesn't really put a lot of emotion in. Like mm-hmm. there were some really like gut wrenching moments of this, uh, especially in, like the last episode or so, where I'm just like, I need a little more range from Jeremy Renner here um, but uh, I thought uh, who's the chick uh, who's Haley Steinfeld yeah but who's the oh Kate Bishop Kate Bishop uh, she was annoying but she's kind of annoying in the comic books too but is she because yeah, 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 that's why I need the because background I read I know, the Bad did, did you ever stuff. did you ever read the Bad didn't you read the Bad Fraction I read stuff? some of it not all of it what did you think about that, of that? Um, what did I, you read again, exactly I'm not to? a Hawkeye guy so I wasn't like oh you gotta finish it all I enjoyed it what I read I think I picked up a trade that's what story was, was the it library. Uh, the first one it's the one with the purple with the tracksuit guy yeah. yeah. Again, this was when I was getting the trades through the library. Mm-hmm. So I think I read like the first trade. I, I thought it was good. I liked it, but I wasn't like, I need to read every one I, of them. I liked it too. I think it felt a little overhyped because what I when I read it, they were like, Hawk, this is one of like the, the, the greatest stories of the 2000s, this Matt Fraction Hawkeye run. And I read it and I, I love the... Uh, the uh, Pizza Dog? No, who's the artist? Oh, David Aha. Uh, David Aha. I, I really love the art. I love the style. And I thought the writing was good and I, and I liked the down to earthness. You read of the it. whole thing too, didn't you? I read the whole... I think I yeah. read the whole thing. This was now like... Four years ago, when right? I read it. Um, but I remember like being done with it, being like, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. this. Was a nice little story, and I, I liked getting the, the the little hints of it in this show. Mm-hmm. But like the design know, aesthetic was definitely present, definitely, there. which is through a big fervor up there because uh, David Aha didn't get any credit credit mm-hmm. for this shit. Um, and I like that aesthetic. I think that looked really cool, oh, t- and it gave it its own distinctive unique. vibe. Yeah, yeah, very. very and honestly, it's kind of Starlin-esque where they're incorporating arrows and all yeah. of the the panels and stuff. Super, super cool. Um, um, but, like, but, uh, but like Pizza Dog is Clint I, Barton's dog, not Kate Bishop's dog. Well, so my, my they thing were trying was to like, pass a torch in this show yeah, I, using I, that plot. I, and it, I, I assume there's a lot more to Pizza Dog in the comic books because I don't think there was yeah, shit on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People got really into him on the show and I didn't, I didn't like... No, I, I think he's just Pizza Dog in the comic book too. I, don't, I mean... Uh, did they do like a whole issue from his perspective yes, or something? Yes, they do a whole issue with like no words where Pizza mm-hmm. Dog is the, the star of the, the episode. That would have been cool. The, the star of the issue. Uh, yeah, and then you get into Madame Mask is in the comic book and stuff. Lots of the Magia and stuff mm-hmm. is in there. It, 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 no, the comic book was good. Um, it, but I felt the actress playing Kate Bishop was kind of annoying. Um, My thing is, I like Haley Steinfeld. Uh, I, I, I I've liked her ever since she was in um, the remake of um, Gilmore Girls or some shit like that. Why? No, fucking here the, we go. The John Wayne remake. Um, oh, True Grit. True Grit. Thank you. Yeah, she was in that, and I thought she was really good oh, in that. Right, I was right. Yeah, she was good in that. Yeah, and then of course she started playing Haley Steinfeld and everything. Unfortunately, and I think that's the problem you're having is. But the thing I, is, I just had a problem. She did not break the show for. I still said it's no, my yeah. second best. Well, but I don't think show. she. 
is, was she like that in the comics though? But like I, but I, because I always thought she was more serious. Because I read like no, you, she's kind of. I think Fix, Fix of, and I read Young Avengers. Yes, the Alan Heinberg stuff that introduced that character, and she was a way more serious, darker character in Young Avengers. Because my recollection is her motivation was she was a rape survivor, and this was her reaction to her assault was to get into the melee weapons and make sure that she was a, she never could face that again. She was still like the poor little rich girl, but obviously she had a much uh, heavier motivation. Remember that. Do you remember that? That's my recollection. That right yeah. Now. No, I. Uh, that was like the early I, I 2000s, think, man. That's a long time ago. So I can understand either I'm misremembering or we, you know, I don't know. But uh, that's but my recollection, though. I, I would let a, a listener chime in. I think yeah. that she was kind of a boppy, annoying, getting herself into trouble. In that she was playing the same character she plays in almost everything. I, I, I saw her in the 17. Comic, in the comic book, I think it was the same thing. I think she's oh, okay. getting herself into fucking trouble, and then Clint's trying to go get her bailout because she's being too uh, aggressive or ambitious for her mm-hmm. skill set or whatever. I think that was a part of the thing. Um, I, I did like in the show, I did like they tied it into Avengers 1 with the whole knocked in the apartment and, and she's watching Clint this fucking normal ass guy I love that they have the rights to all that di- I love material. it dude. I love I'm they like, can keep go back and referencing that no shit no yeah. problem with that um, but really there was not other than like the tracksuit guys and the pizza dog there was really not a lot of parallels between the two like the swordsman I don't remember being in any of that shit well and obviously that's not the swordsman from the comic books at uh, yeah, all yeah totally uh, you know that's, I mean, that, that's very much another instance of just using the IP without any regard for it right, you know right. um, so yeah I, but I, I thought every single episode I just thought that was I think it was the most consistent of these Marvel shows because even Loki the first couple episodes you're like what the fuck is going on and then it takes off and ends really really well this show I, I like Hawkeye consistently from episode to episode I watched it every I think it was Wednesday when it came out I watched it every Wednesday when it came out we watched it and I was just perfectly happy with it I will binge watch it at the end I was sort of like I don't really need Kate Bishop to take over as Hawkeye now I, I don't really need that well I think part of the point of the show is this Renner is going to go off and do mayor of Kingstown whatever the fuck he's doing now I think the point is the old guy is going to come no, off the I, stage. I think so too, but I, I, it didn't leave me. It didn't. It wasn't a Yelena, right? Where, I'm like, where you're like, yeah, let's go make Black Panther two tomorrow with Yelena as a star. But Panther you definitely two. want to see right. Yelena and and the new Hawkeye on the same team in a movie, though, right? Sure, and she was great in the show. Yeah, as soon she's as, so great. As soon that as Yelena shit. popped. Oh, and then oh, I, we can't the fucking about, macaroni. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to spoil. No, uh, go ahead, dude. I want to binge watch it tomorrow. So, you know, Kingpin. They well, they tie about that. They yeah, tie King. Well, there's no way he all your fucking shit in your life, and you can move that microphone closer uh yeah and then kingpin shows up and i'm and, just and like, it's horrible they, they they did him dirty on that show they didn't did him they didn't do him dirty it, it's it, it was terrible the back and the fight was awful the fight wasn't great but he's the fucking kingpin so i, I don't i didn't care about the fight i just like that they i don't know maybe i'm a victim of some of this marvel shit too where the fact that, that the fucking kingpin showed up already more cool universe crossing shit showed up in hawkeye than showed up in uh wandavision which what i was yeah. told was going to be the fucking multiverse shuffle right, right? uh and i'm like fucking Kingpin so now showed. the Netflix stuff count. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So you give me Yelena and you give me Kingpin? Yes, I'm fucking down. I'm down. I liked it. I'll binge watch tomorrow. It's my two. They're like 40 minutes it's long, not, right? It's not like the most amazing show ever, but I, I was perfectly happy with watching that. I, nothing in it made me pissed off. Uh, right. And I had some, oh, this is fucking cool moments when Yelena and Kingpin showed up. And uh, I need I to watch like, it just because my list goes Loki, What If. So you finished What If? You watched mm-hmm. all the What If? Oh, yeah. Okay. I fucking loved it. Well, let me let me get my Hawkeye bit in real and then we'll go to What If. Um, when I started living with roommates. I had, the first roommate I had was this super passive aggressive guy that got way on my fucking nerves. When was this? This uh, was the early 2000s. Yeah. Three. Right. Back then. And so for a while there, what I was doing is I'd go out to the country and I'd spend the weekend with my father. You know, I was doing that pretty routinely until uh, this one week he seemed to kind of had an attitude about it. I could tell maybe I was around too much getting on his nerves. And so I, I never did that again because I'm hundred percent that bitch. I'm just fucking petty like that. Like, okay, well you will only see me once a year from now on. Um, while I go down there, he has this thing where he tapes his shows. He tapes the shows at, at, at night on VHS, and then the next day he'll watch them and fast forward through the commercials and shit, right? And so when I go over and hang out with him, well, one of the things I do was I just sit there and let him watch his, you know, CSI, his um, uh, JAG, um, whichever one the Mark Harmon was blue on. Blue Bloods. <laughs> I think this is pretty Blue Bloods, but yeah, that, the, exactly that kind of well, shit. What, what was CBS. The, CBS Primetime. What was the show uh, he was in before that? Uh, uh, Bull? Oh, NCIS? No, um, 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 Tom Mag- Magna P.I., Tom Selleck. Yeah. Was Blue it Bloods. like The Commish or some shit like that? No, no that, was, that was Michael He Chiklis. was in some, yeah, that was Michael Chillis. He was in another show like that, though. Anyway, I, Yeah, ahead. well, and what's funny, too, is my father was like, I want you to watch this uh, CNIS. Uh, there's a girl on here that I think you're going to like, and it's Pauly Perrette with the whole goth thing and the tats and stuff, and I was like, you are correct, sir. Good call. I appreciate watching this. So I'd watch this stuff with him. Person, person of Interest is another one, um, where I would never watch this shit on my own. I would never choose 
to watch it on purpose. But for an hour, hanging out with him, watching him watch, you know, hang out with him, watch those shows. It was entertaining. It was engaging. I wanted to get to the end. I wanted to see how the mystery was solved. I wanted to see who murdered whom, that kind of thing. I was cool for the duration of that, but I'm never going to go back and watch a season of it or anything like that. This is the way I felt about Hawkeye. I watched it because it's got direct ties with the Avengers. It goes back to the, the Marvel movies that I cared about. It continues the continuity. You do ultimately get the Netflix tie-in as well. I like Haley Steinfeld. And so it's like, okay, well, I don't want to get behind on this. I don't want to become a thing like with Daredevil and stuff where I keep meaning to watch it, never getting around to watching it. It just becomes like this hobgoblin in my mind. So I watched it as it was coming out, roughly. I didn't watch it like immediately, but I watched it a few days before it came out. I enjoyed it. There's a lot of funny stuff in there. It's cute. If I had never watched it, I wouldn't. it wouldn't have negatively impacted on me. I did watch it and I liked it fine. It was it was fine. But I, it's not number one. It's not number two. It's, I don't even know if it's number three. Definitely better than WandaVision. But I, I, it's just not something that I really engaged with that much. I, I liked it. It was cute. Uh, I, I especially like the big finale. I like when they're both on the ice. They're sliding around. They're doing all the trick arrows. I loved seeing no, all I the trick the arrows. Trick arrow. I yeah. love the trick arrows. That was great. great. Yeah. Um, the, the, I like the, I the la- LARPing, bro. The LARPing was they all right. The LARPers. Yeah. I mean, the LARPers. Uh, and we I used to, to look, okay, so we used to work at a comic shop where yeah. across the way they did the in the park yeah. they would the park. LARP. I love that LARP is on a, it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. My wife well, was my wife was like, what the fuck is fireball, LARPing? Fireball, it's fireball, live action fireball. role playing, you normie. <laughs> Plebe. Yeah. <laughs> you plebe. Uh, and it also, it, it makes sense that the LARPers would be able to hook him up with the costume. And and I'm sorry, I, I saw a bunch of people complaining about like the cops and the firefighters like doing inappropriate stuff and abusing their powers. It's like, oh, I guess you've never known any yeah. cops or firefighters. Welcome to like real life. <laughs> right? They wouldn't do that sort of thing. Oh, they wouldn't. Uh, the other thing is, man, that Vera Farmiga fist c- twist, sure shit wasn't. Like, who the fuck didn't see that shit coming? What like, the minute twist? you cast oh, Vera the- Farmiga, you know exactly what you're in for that shit fooled nobody the question was whether or not she was in cahoots with the swordsman or not that's the only question and she was wasted as usual moral villain wasted himself yeah Yeah, peace I love peace I'd be out of a job with peace Do we know each other? Time. Reality. Reality. It's changeable. Where you want to be? That's the question, isn't it? Every universe is different. Each one unique. Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me, I I get it. Who are you? The name's Captain Carter. I am the Watcher. I observe all that transpires here. But I do not, cannot, will not interfere. I guess I have to freestyle then. Hey! We have you out the bird. A Ravager never flies solo. I said, never flies solo. Uh, is that some kind of catchphrase? You had me worried for a second. Journey to face the unknown and ponder the question. What if? What if? Fucking loved it. That was great. Now, I think you need to give a little bit of backstory with your what if, because we've never done an actual what if episode of the Marvel superheroes. So you really need to let the audience know how you feel about what if and go like deep. Favorite Marvel books to read, just for the simple fact that they will take a known story and twist it and warp it into something new, um, an alternative version of the story. Um, 
It's kind of like a choose your own adventure. Kind of, I mean, well, not yeah, so up much. to it, including the fact that if you turn to the wrong page on choose your own adventures, you fucking die. Yeah, badly. I, mean, I, I just remember as a child picking them up and loving them. I, I mean, the you know, if Inferno actually happened, Wolverine eating a baby is a is a prize and shit like that. And I mean, they they just had such cool stories. Um, I told you about really, such downers. I mean, a lot of the stories were downers. Like very mm-hmm. rarely did, were they like happy endings. You know, I still remember the one where I think a Jim Lee cover was like, what happened if the Fantastic Four all had the same powers? Which is kind of goofy, but when you start reading it, it's like, well, that's kind of a fucked up story. It's, it was just interesting. It was always and interesting. it sounds like you're really heavy into volume two, the one that started in like 88 or 9. Did you yeah. ever go back to the, the original? I've read some of the early, early ones. Um, I actually just picked up a trade that I haven't really read. Um, yeah, see, I'm trying to think. All the, all I, I didn't stuff. pick up a lot of the first series ones because I remember getting What If Atlantis Had Been Doomed, I think it was called, or something along those lines. It had Mark Sylvester interiors Danny Bolandi I think did the inks and Michael Golden did the cover that's the reason why I bought it because I like that Michael Golden cover uh, so I remember buying that one off the newsstand or at the Jimco actually so I mean, like, uh, my personal affairs were like you know what if Professor X had touched the ju- the uh, Juggernaut gem j- uh, and become mm-hmm. the Juggernaut that was like the first year of the second series yeah, was, yeah, yeah. The, those were the ones I remember picking up the first ones uh, what about the what if Captain America had been thought out today with that great Bill Sinkevich yeah, cover, cover with one. the ages and stuff I, I, I always loved the the, the uh, Conan ones. Yeah. Uh, the one, What If Electra Had Lived, actually drawn by Frank Miller, yeah. written by is, Frank is Miller. That first, is that the first film? That's from the first one? series, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually own that one still. The, the Avengers of the 1950s, which ended up becoming canon eventually. That's uh, where yeah. Agents of Atlas came from. Um, the ones I'm thinking of is like... Um, you had the whole M2 line that spun out of the Spider-Girl issue of What If. Yeah, that whole the M2 stuff with like J2 yeah. and uh, the Avengers, like the I A-Next, just, what it was called. I just, I've always enjoyed that stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think of like the ones at the top of my head that, that I really like were like you know well i've told you about how i, I was sitting on a stoop reading the uh, in, uh, infinity one the, the sorry the inferno one and ron Lim drew it and it was like peak ron Lim. and you'd had wolverine kill kitty pride and that's what kind of woke him up and his skeleton ends up stabbing baron mordo from behind yeah. to avenge kitty and i remember cheering when i was sitting on the stoop reading it's like yes you know I, i'm so invested in that uh what if wolverine was lord of the vampires and punishers a vampire yeah. hunter and I think tom Morgan did the artwork on I that one. I a bunch of those still. Um, what if Wolverine was in Shield? Um, oh yeah, that was one of my favorites too. Yeah, you had that, the Rob Liefeld Rob artwork. Probably, I think yep. Jim Valentino wrote that one. Yep, that was a good Nick one. Nick Fury, all that. Um, oh, and Scott Williams inking the cover too. That was a really good combination there. Mm-hmm. That was a very strange. I'm surprised, I'm surprised more people don't uh, swipe that cover. I think that's a really striking cover, and I, I would definitely see that one being repurposed. I'm trying to remember some of the, like I own a bunch of the still the the I guess the second volume ones that I just I don't know. I would go back, and those were some of the few books I would go back and reread because I enjoyed them so much. Well, and you like imaginary stories in general too. You like some of the stuff that they've done with DC too, I would think, right? Uh, some of their Elseworld Red stuff Sun was good. I read, and yeah, the Elseworld stuff I enjoyed. I told you, I read that stuff more than I, I read the mainline books because I just was bored with the mainline stuff. But yeah, no, I read Sun. Uh, a lot of the Elseworlds. I think that's where I, DC I owned, I owned that, that issue of where, you know, Superman's baby kicks Lois Lane and mm, dies. The annual, and that one, like, annual, didn't Brian Hitch do that one? It was so funny because Kevin Smith had talked about it one day and I was like, I remember that book, but he was mentioning a different. I'm gonna, I think it's uh, he was talking about it, it's, it's it's kissing a, Maximo on, on the Lois's grave or some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, he's kissing, yeah. Cold blood. I, I just I just remember really enjoying it. I have the the one. Actually, where, I think that was an Armageddon 2001 annual. Now to think about it though, because I know which one is the one where Superman's an old man and it turns out Batman is some kind of vampire creature. And Superman's living up in the sky because he can't because of the clouds. Dude, they had some good Elseworld mm-hmm. ones. Uh, I, I think that that's DC's strength is you go with the myth and so you can kind of go out there and do crazy stuff and do all alternate histories and alternate circumstances. I think that continuity helps Marvel and hurts DC, typically, in terms of the stories and what you're expecting out of the stories. Mac, you've been very quiet about What If. Did you ever read any What If shit? Yeah, sure. I mean, the ones like you said, I think I read the, like the Wolverine was Shield. I read the Captain America, Bill Sienkiewicz, the Ice one. I got a few. There yeah. was an Iron Man one I remember liking. That. I can't yeah, remember. there was an Iron Man one that I'm spacing out on. There were a few Doctor Strange ones, right? Yeah. They were cool. They were cool, but I never like was seeking out What If issues. Oh, yeah, agree. and it, maybe partly because they weren't in continuity, and you were kind of one of that stuff that counted. I you don't think? know. I don't know. Or just they didn't do a they, lot of Iron Man. They probably ones. didn't do a lot with the guys I liked. Yeah. So it was just like whatever. There was especially the second series. There was a lot of fucking Punisher, Venom, Punisher as Venom, uh, <laughs> kind of well, shit. I have that one, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the TV show though, this was one you've been hotly anticipating ever since they first announced well, I, it. I think Fryhold told me I called it. I was telling man, there has to be a what if show, and then they talked about it, and so I was super psyched for it. Um, from 
most of it I enjoyed. I, I just did not like. Okay, so to me, what worked great about What If is you would meet the Watcher and he would tell you about whatever world he was in and whatever little issue there was there and then the story would play out. And so it's a story you kind of vaguely remember, but it's askewed. It's different. And that well, was, he, he would absolutely ground you in a specific point in continuity, like chapter and verse. Moment. Ruins. You, I, you know, well, I mean, Ruins wasn't a What If though. But, what you, but you could kind of, wouldn't you count it as a What If? No, no, but I mean, I, it, it, you can. It, it's it, it's not a what if because okay. the watcher isn't Curveball, in there. Curveball, my bad. So yeah, because either watcher, no, Galactus is the one who's dead in outer space. Yes, God yeah. is dead. Well, they they don't do watcher's not in the book Who? at all, is he? Who? The watcher's not in what if at all? The watcher, I mean, the, 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 the watcher's watcher. in ruins. He might make it some appearance, but I don't. I think I think I he's think like he on is. the moon or some shit like that. Oh, uh, maybe. I have to reread it. I just remember really liking. I, uh, I don't I'll count. I don't count the what ifs if he doesn't narrate. Yeah, it's true. He's the guy. He's the big character. But I guess I guess. Guess what I enjoyed about the what ifs? If if it was a double issue, usually it was a very you know very put together story. You read it, you moved on. It was something you come in the next you know the next month. Um, I I liked it. Kind of started about the show. I hated the fact that the watcher started getting involved in the actual show. I I, I didn't like that too much. He's already breaking the cardinal rule of being a yes. watcher in the in the first. Eh, season. No, I like that part. You like no, that? I, I I I thought the show started out terrible. I thought the first what if with Agent Carter was awful. So bad that like I was debating whether or not I even need to watch anyone. Same. Yeah. Uh, it, it was literally the movie, and you just changed the main character. I, I did not care for it at all. I didn't like the Steve was whatever. The Hydra Stomper. The Hydra Stomp. I, I, I was like, I don't like any of this. And because it's only like 25 minutes long, they tried to tell the entire Captain America movie in 25 minutes. And it was just, I couldn't even breathe watching it. It was going way too fast, and I didn't care. And I was like, this is terrible. Uh, from that, they go to what if T'Challa was Star-Lord, and I actually really, really liked that one. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm back in a little bit. Um, what was after that? Well, what, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's see, if you're going to go for each one, so what did you think about the Captain Carter one? Because they, they actually they I mean, a Captain it, Carter comic me, book even. I agree. They rushed it. Um, it did feel kind of jumpy where she all of a sudden knew how to use her powers and she's throwing the shield. Um, but it kind of introduced you to the art style that you were going to be watching, which I was okay with. I was like, okay, this is the design. This is the style. So I didn't I didn't mind it. Which too, I thought was much. dodgy. I thought even though it was the same art style and it was the same animation style through all the episodes, some episodes they clearly put more work into. Like the, the last couple episodes, the last episode in particular looks really good and some of these they it borders on not looking good at all oh uh, I, I hated the animation yeah i, 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 it, I it, they it. it was all like candy valley to me i couldn't stand looking at the show it, it very much you ever seen like the french style of animation it's not very well known they're not they, they, but you well, every like again, Cisco, do you i don't know that shit no not french canadian oh. french french uh yeah I, I i hated looking at the show i hated the design character designs i hated the animation style i hated the weird fucking non-lip syncing thing that was going that, that on that was there. the thing that bothered me. The, the um, lip syncing was better in some issues, some episodes than others. And yeah. when it was really bad, it just distracted me yeah. so much. I and, 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 and the Captain Carter episode was a prime because example of Disney. the worst shit. Yeah. Like Disney's animation is right. fucking lip synced this bad? Like, ugh. Well, they farmed that out clearly. Well, obviously. Um, but I'm but, saying Disney, if anybody is gets a negative mark for fucking up animation, it's a Disney prop. Yeah. So Captain Carter. Okay, yeah, I mean, it was yeah, okay. fine. Uh, what about the Star Lord? Uh, you're buying Star-Lord. the Hydra Star. Yeah, the Star- you're buying it. Oh, if I could get it cheap, yes, I would. Nah, hell no, I would. I don't even want it. No, yeah. no, no chance. Um, no, I liked the uh, the T'Challa one. Yeah, I liked the Star Lord one. I thought it was pretty funny. I, I liked it because it kind of clowned on Star Lord, <laughs> where uh, it showed like, yeah, if T'Challa was Star Lord, he would have been good at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like actually get his shit together. I liked it. Uh, what if the world? Oh, I, I, I was I mean, gonna put you... in. I, I definitely enjoyed the second one more, and it definitely made me less of a hate watch. But I didn't watch it immediately because I was so put off by the Captain Carter that I kind of until. I don't know. I guess I saw it before you came to my place. You watched most of the show. Yeah, I watched at my a bunch place. of your place, yeah. Um, but I appreciated Chadwick Boseman. I appreciated they were doing some different stuff, but it also felt like kind of a throwaway story. It didn't really seem like it was going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was cute, but I didn't love it or anything. Uh, the next one was What If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes? And I know that was what we're then going to killing all the Avengers. Yeah. And Ant-Man. who was it that was Ant Man was the one yeah. killing him, right? Well, Yellow didn't Jacket. Care. Yellow Jacket. Didn't well, care. Henry Pime as Yellow Jacket. I, dude, I thought it was pretty cool. I did. Fucking care. murder. He's a psychopath. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's fine. If you like Hank Pym, it's probably not going to be your jam. True. I liked it because he was so that, grounded in the movie continuity. I love that they're going because this is the big well, problem. When he I killed had. the Hulk, dude, that was fucked up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. All but the thing that I hated about one of the many things I hated about the Captain Carter episode was that we saw the movie. Yeah. So it 
doesn't matter where she's standing because nobody gets shot until the serum has been proven to succeed. The Nazi doesn't start shooting anybody until we see the super soldier serum works. So he shoots as many people as he can and then he steals the serum and tries to get the fuck out of there. We saw the fucking movie. So it doesn't matter if he's standing somewhere off the side, like if Carter's standing in a different position, that doesn't change his reaction to shit. So it plays out differently than the movie. So one of the things that was to me very important about What If is they'd find that one pivotal moment in the actual continuity of the Marvel comics and things would go left instead of right. So they fucking tricked it to make that happen. But also, I watched two seasons of Agent Carter. She's not going to put on a fucking costume and jump around and shit. That's not who she is as a character. So it just like, it didn't fit her character. And is there, aren't there Union Jacks all over the Yeah, costume? it's, it's, a, it's yeah, she's basically yet. Captain Britain kind but of, sort of. She's, but she's worked for the U.S. government. Right, it's just, it, it sucked. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I hated I that. Where, what I loved, liked about the, the it, Avengers one. It felt one, to me like they had like a, a character concept drawing and they just fucking. Right. And, and people, the, the people who fucking embracing that, I it's just it. like gross. I don't understand um because it's not who she is so you're just getting off on a muscular chick what the fuck's the deal you know what actually now that i'm thinking about it i think this one i did actually like i'm trying to remember back because we watched all these you just one yeah i think i actually did like the one where he was killing i like i liked i mean obviously they what they the what if avengers lost the mighty zero i love that you you know the scenes from each one of the movies are going from and because we know the timeline they're kind of in the correct sequence and shit um so i dug that also it was fucking bleak yeah. and like all the characters we love are dying one after another uh so you had the old Ten Little Indians things so it calls back to that fucking uh, Spider-Man is Amazing Friends from one of the first cartoons I watched with superheroes in it uh, I dug that shit and uh, you know the fact is if you're going to have somebody go nuts and kill a bunch of people kind of is going to be Hank Pym it's going to be Hank Pym it's going to you know oh, so yeah, I, kinda, I, I dug that one I like that one that one that, that one up to that point was my favorite and I, I'm not sure that there is a one I like better now we'll see how it goes uh, what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands I like see, that one right? Yeah, that was the last one I watched because uh, you started watching it after I got home from work and I was taking a shower so you'd already started that one and you were kind of like watching it while we were talking or eating and stuff and then I caught like bits of it but I really missed the ch- a, a big chunk of that one and then when I went back to watch the ones I missed that was like the very last one I watched and I fucking hated that one. Oh really? I, I almost I, 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 I didn't hate it as much as Car- Captain Carter but I really fucking hated it because it was repetitive and the animation sucked and I didn't like the story at all as like I didn't I didn't care for where they were going with it I, it's not that I couldn't see Doctor Strange doing that stuff but I just didn't feel right and also again it wasn't what happened in the movie and the whole point of what ifs is you take something that you, we know happened and you turn it a little bit well, and no, that's not what happened she's in the vehicle with him and she died in the cartoon he's she's dumb in the, the episode in, was good yeah. I liked it yeah. you liked it I, I thought liked it was good it. yeah I liked it no, I, I, did, I liked I really the fact funny that he starts is, I, absorbing these evil powers and he's like fucking becoming this weird new kind of demigod creature so well could, and then you have the one in the different version of reality and then they're fighting each other yeah, he's gonna show up in the fucking movie live action movie so. <sighs> yeah yeah, I think he is, and that's one of the things I hated about it too. Is knowing he's like, oh, I'm gonna deal with this shit in the fucking movie. Oh, no, all the was, time. I, you you need to rewatch it. There's something wrong with you. Yeah. I think I, I, I mean yeah. I was like universally liked, including by me and him. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's something wrong. I'm with wired different. I don't like uh, it at all. No shit. Okay, what if zombies? Fucking loved it. I remember you loving. That I one want too. that goddamn Captain America figure, dude. I can't find it anymore anymore. Uh, I, I, I liked it just because it was so ridiculously dark. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, this shouldn't be on Disney Plus, and I don't really care what's going on. And and like Vision's got zombie Scarlet Witch it's fucking uh, feeding her. Tied up and he's feeding. Like I was like, okay, I'm down with it. I, I hate the Marvel zombie concept. I think it's super. Oh dumb. no! I, and I was like, oh shit, I actually like this. <laughs> like, Dude, I love the fact that when Wasp, when she's giant woman, I guess, and she gets bitten and she falls down, I'm just like, oh, she's so getting up as a fucking zombie. Oh, That's gonna yeah. be so fucking gross. No, hey, I remember I love you cheering thought, when she grows into the giant zombie too. Yeah, I uh, did. It was such. I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, I don't know. I liked it a lot. It was, it was kind of weird and definitely darker than I was expecting. I thought it'd be more like the fucking comic way, books where it's a little bit a little bit more abusing but I like the Marvel superheroes I like zombies it's kind of my things so yeah I, I dug it too yeah okay uh, what if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark that was very interesting I like yeah, that, that one I, I, I went in thinking that it was going to be like not good at all and I was going to hate it because of the weird Killmonger yeah. fetish that people seem to have that kind of trips me out uh, but then it was like kind of like twisted and I kind of ended up liking it I mean, I well it and again cool. it, I, it, I like the fact that he was kind of playing Tony yeah yeah that was kind of cool which I should not like but 
Yeah, I ended up kind of like it. And also, the dude did a pretty decent Downey Jr. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know that it wasn't. I kind of thought there's no way they got Downey Jr., but he, he's actually yeah. pretty good at this. Um, and my thing was again, that's the continuity. They 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 were true to the things that happened in the movie, but different because yeah. it's a different universe and different circumstances. But it felt grounded in the movie continuity, and so it felt like a what if to me. Okay, uh, what if Thor was an only child? Sucked. Yeah, thumbs down. It was terrible. Yeah, it was, I, was, I, so I was had its cute moments. Was. Like when he's in Vegas, that was pretty. It funny. needed to be a lot funnier to be. Yeah, that, that one should have been their comedic one. I, it, I think that well, it was, was their comedic one. It just wasn't any goddamn good. Yeah, that one and Agent Carter are like hands down the worst. I mean, and I will say this: it was stupid, but it didn't bother me. Where Cat, Agent Carter fucking bothered me. So that's I definitely um, I, I liked it better than the Doctor Strange one too, just because I hated the Doctor Strange one. That, so no, you're yeah. crazy. Uh, what if Ultron won? That, that didn't even entirely make sense to me. Like, did he like bisects Thanos? How did what, that he happen? Him in no, half. He, he he turns in. Okay, so it was that he completed the transformation division's body. Remember they're doing the dumb right. truck levitation thing. Sure. My problem was that he was the uh, James Spader Ultron, which I can't stand. Well, not just that, but they didn't so, actually get Spader, and the guy whose voice they did get sucked. He sucked, but he was doing a James Spader impression, and I'm but just, not a good one. Like like he was not the guy who was doing Downey. He was doing a shit. But he was voice. doing the sarcastic. Hey. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, me, and Worst I, of both worlds. Uh, so Ari took me out of it. Um, but even with that, I still thought it was uh, amusing. It was fine. It, it was not. I didn't like actively hate it. I act, I disliked it. You disliked. I disliked it. it. For I, sort of, I did like killing off Thanos that easily, that quickly. That, I'm not cool with that. I, was, I wasn't a fan of that, but no, I, I wasn't cool with that. I, I, and also because of the how the episode built, I could tell they're working their way toward the big season finale and dragging the Watcher into it and all this kind of shit. And was that the one where they have like uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye running? around like the age of apocalypse dark future shit I, right it was uh, right but i think were they not the ones from the zombie world or am i no no no, no, no were, that's right that's yeah, yeah ultron yeah. one and yeah. they're trying to stay away from all the and somehow the two right? non-powered yeah. characters yeah. the ones who are still... kind of like it's in that file book it's in that file and i'm like ah, dude, you're not supposed to like well but yeah. i mean he was coming after the watcher yeah which makes well, the watcher look well, like a real pussy too which i didn't well, yeah. care but the watcher's always been a pussy did you see his card yeah he's got zero dexterity okay He's got max intelligence. It's all going toward zero balance. Dexterity. Zero agility and dexterity and strength. <laughs> By the way, what do we think about Jeffrey Wright? Oh, I love I love his voice. It's it it pretty yeah, great. I thought yeah. it was good. I thought it was, yeah. it was yeah. fine. With uh, him. And he's going to be Jim Gordon too. What is it with all these guys doing double duty? I don't know. That's not cool. Pick, pick no, a side. Fine. Pick no, a side. No, no, it's fine. Did they subtly make him black? He he's got kind of a darkish skin tone for a watch. I, right I'm there. not comfortable right now. You're making me uncomfortable. Yeah. I, th- I think they subtly darkened yeah, him. You're making me uncomfortable. I'm cool with it. Neil Young's back. God damn it. Neil Young, get the fuck out of here. Son hey, of I, don't know. I said Neil Young, not <laughs> Neil Dylan Diamond. isn't that political I didn't anymore. Say Bob Diamond. <laughs> Bob Diamond. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, okay, and then uh, final episode where they shuffle everything together. Yeah. Uh, it just too f- it, it felt rushed. Everything doesn't have to be in fucking continuity. Everything doesn't have to be this gigantic, you know, cosmic event. I hate all the multiverse shit that they're doing now. I really feel like the, the, again what I was talking don't about. Watch Spider Man then. It's like Yeah, don't watch, I, yeah, don't I watch still, Spider-Man like I still haven't seen Spider Man people left. Like the other two million people yeah billion people um i want strong grounded continuity from marvel and i want gonzo cuckoo bullshit from dc and marvel's just doing cock the the, the nutsy multiversal shit and i fucking don't like that shit i don't you're putting you're putting fish in my peanut butter i'm just i don't i can't stand that shit so no i wasn't into you've it. never been a marvel fanboy though I, you're a DC dude I was a, I was a marvel guy throughout the 80s i didn't i converted to Look, dc in like the mid 90s you're mad marvel is beating them to the multiverse stuff no no and no and they're gonna do it better i, I don't I want Marvel to be grounded. I want it look, all to I, count. Look, we know fucking Michael Keaton's going to show up as Batman and Flashpoint or whatever. We've already seen the Flash. There's like three different Flashes. And it's going to be fucking horrible, except for Michael Keaton. Who and you're going to get on this podcast and be like, no, I really liked it because it didn't have bad James it, Spader voice actor. And it's just not. Look, they're doing it better, dude. So just fucking get it over with. Just chill the fuck out. Now, what I want to see is George Clooney pop up as a Batman, too. I ain't going to happen. See Val Kilmer. <laughs> oh shit! He, he, he's got God like a, damn it, Neil Young, soon. get out of here! He's, he's got I a, didn't know he liked. Uh, he's got a bat of blow, blow good art, oh, a dark gun. <laughs>
blow a ring? Um, I would have to say that I think Michael Keaton is a better vulture than a Batman. I think Michael Keaton as the vulture is way more interesting. I think it's close enough. I don't care that I can just say yeah, Michael Keaton. I, I, think, I just think he's a fantastic actor. He's whoever, so great. Whoever, whoever he takes though. on is fucking... Okay, I don't elevated. want to talk about Michael Keaton. Um, okay, I thought the last episode, I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't. I honestly, I didn't see it coming where they were going to shuffle all these one-shot episodes together because I didn't give a shit enough about... Yeah. I was really... I was like... I mean, By the way, there, there was an episode Please they didn't finish, finish in time. Can you let me finish? Can you let me finish? Yeah. Can you let me finish? I was so like, I think what if's going to be fucking awesome. And I was sort of like, kind of had some ups and downs. I'd be up, 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 and then Thor episode. And I was just like, you know, this isn't... I don't know what I was expecting, but this isn't what I was expecting. Um, And then they... Sh- then So I'd kind of... We were not watching this the day it came out. We would wait till the weekend. I think we even had a couple backup at one point. So then when they shuffled them all together, I was like, oh shit, I probably should have seen this coming. I didn't see it coming. Um, So it was cool. Like when, you know, they're dumping the zombies on Vision and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I remember that episode. Uh, So yeah, it was fine. I and, and again, these things are like 25 minutes long. So it, it made sense because that's how What If was because you would have some great issues and then you would have some really just, yeah. uh, like I don't care. Well, it issues. was kind of a tryout book, wasn't it? Like they, 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 they'd have new writers working on the stuff yeah. because they were out of continuity and stuff. I mean, it was just, yeah, it was. But there was one episode, you, you probably know about this, that they didn't actually get finished in yeah, time they and get, they referenced yeah, it's the one it. where Tony ends up on the, no, the planet that uh, Thor does. Oh, the uh, Ragnarok. Ragnarok, yeah. Uh, the Sakaar? Play, the Jeff Sakaar, Sakaar, yeah. Tony actually yeah. ends up there. That's why Gamora has that fucking uh, Infinity Gem Infinity Crusher. Cr- yeah, Tony creates it in that world, and so apparently it was supposed to pop up. For some reason, they didn't complete it, and so there's some stills of it. I mean, Tony builds a, a Iron Man suit out of all the junk parts on Sakaar, and it looks like this fucking badass mech. Um, but I don't cool. know. I don't know anything else about it. Anyway, well, again, I saw those episodes without having seen the Doctor Strange one. So when he was doing all the weird Lovecraft tentacle things, I just assumed that. Okay, that's just the version of Doctor Strange. I didn't know the context of it, but it didn't do much for me to find out the context. I didn't really need it. It was fine. Yeah, you're the only one. So I didn't. So the same thing with the Infinity Crusher. If they don't have that episode, it's okay. They just happen to have it. I'll, I'll buy into it. It's what if, whatever. So anyway, all in all, can't wait for season two. I could, I could. I'm fine with that. Yeah. season two unless they're gonna go cre- unless they're like, oh, people were like, we were like killing the Avengers and doing zombie stuff. Let's well, lean this- into the darker side of it. Otherwise, to me, the what ifs always have to be dark. Well, no, to me, yeah. no, no, no. You either do dark or you do funny comedy like ha 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 that's what the that's what the th- yeah. no, what the, no what the goes into bizarre your ambush bug bullshit like it's mm. just like oh that's not funny I don't like that so anyway I, I thought what if was just marginally better than WandaVision and remember I didn't hate WandaVision nearly as much as this motherfucker yeah. so yeah. I'm not trying to say like I thought WandaVision was fine and this was just slightly better than fine for me uh, but I think I, it's but of the characters I liked I liked the, the fucking sleepless pale dragon demon Doctor Strange yeah. so when I heard he may be popping up in some multiple first movie I was like that's fucking cool that's that's cool. I, I really love the, the zombie one. I thought it was really yeah, cool. I, I was burned out on zombies too. The Marvel zombie stuff. I've read all the stuff so I was like eh. Yeah, they did pretty well. I liked it. But but again a lot of it was just kind of it because surprised me surprised, surprised me they went there on Disney Plus. If I had expected it to be that dark and knew it was going to be that dark then maybe it wouldn't have impressed me as much. Yeah. But I just the darkness level I was like oh this isn't how are they going to do zombies on Disney Plus what's the big deal and then I was like oh shit <laughs> they, they kind of did it. Oh okay. Surprised. But that's, that's my what if. I went from way up here in our prior we mentioned it to Eh, it was okay. And my thing is that I just want it to be what if. I don't want it to be Elseworlds. I don't want them to do shit where it's like you're watching here's, the wrong universe. Here's, here's the here's the, the Western. The, you know here here's the, what if they were old West characters. What if uh, Thor was an only child? It's like I don't, I don't no I'm, I'm yeah. not into that. Do the thing where you're taking a specific point in continuity and then show us one of the things I, I that's important to me with what if is that the whole point to me of what if is it shows you that the Marvel universe that we have is the right one because there's always gonna be some motherfucker that's like well why did Gene have to die why did Obadiah say have to blow his brains out and what what it does is it shows you well it could have gone this other way and it would have been way worse if that had yeah. happened so there's a certain comfort and you see the what if and you're like okay I'm glad that's not how things worked out then this is this is the universe I want to be in we're in the correct timeline that's the darkest timeline that's true yeah they were always yeah. kind of dark and so days. that's that's what I want from the TV show too so you referenced it a moment ago we might as well stick with the animation stuff hit monkey you are gonna have to kill some evil people that totally deserve to die Cause it's your destiny. Hey, business or pleasure? Oh, that's a great question. When you love what you do. Such a hard one to answer, really. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I don't want to make it weird, but you and me, we're connected. I 
told you this was going to get weird. Original sin. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's like a ghost leash. I'm just trying to wrap my head around what's going on. This is a goddamn nightmare. You gotta find the assholes who did this. Hey there. And do this to them. You look like a badass. I never thought a six inch inseam would turn me on. Oh, we get it. You're the conflicted killer. Uh, uh. It's time we put an end to this. That monkey saved my life. How do you know he wasn't there to kill you? Another hit on his list. He's one of the good guys. Your code? You're only going to kill killers. Do you really want to fight with one hand tied behind your back? I know you can use your feet too. That's not the goddamn point. He's here to protect us all. Time to get bloody. Ah! Two dudes, two fates. I don't know about you, but I'd watch the shit out of that. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the conversation we're having. Just the back and forth is incredible. Fucking loved it. Travesty if there's not a season two. Yeah, I, the reason why he didn't watch Hawkeye, because he, he was going to go ahead and watch Hawkeye because you were committed to it. And I said, no, fuck you. You need to watch Hitman, Hit Monkey. And yeah. you can get to Hawkeye when you get to Hawkeye. You need to watch fucking Hit Monkey. Dude, it's fucking fantastic. It's fucking fantastic. It's one of my favorite Marvel things ever. Uh, I love that. And on Hulu? What? It's on yeah. Hulu, yes. See, I want to watch it. If I was going to put it against the Disney Plus, it's above all the Disney Plus shows for me. Really? Uh, yes, I agree. I, I, I loved it more than I, than uh, Captain Winter and Winter Soldier, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it, it's definitely it caught me off guard because he told me about it. I'm like, watch the first one. And they're short episodes. There's only 10. Um, yeah, they're about 22, 24, somewhere in yeah. there. 10 episodes. I think yeah. the first one is the longest one out of all of them. The first one. But the they're, none, one. Of them are, none of them are a half hour. Yeah. And so yeah. you watch the first one. It's like, okay. Then the second one picks up. And I'm like, okay. I see what, and then just full throttle after that. And it's, mm-hmm. it's fun. The writing's great. I like the animation. Um, I, I felt emotions. I didn't think I would feel when shit was happening on screen. It caught me off guard. Yeah. See, the thing with Hit Monkey, I remember when that came Character was getting introduced, and I, I I'd forgotten that they they introduced him in a one shot, and then he started popping up in Deadpool. He mostly has appeared in Deadpool comics, and it just seems like a Deadpoolish concept. Daniel Way, I think, co-created him and wrote the story, and he was famous for like getting canceled essentially because his, his shit was he was too provocative. He was like Marvel's in-house Garth Ennis, you know, taking the piss out of everything, and it eventually rubbed people the wrong way. And I don't even know what happened to that guy. Did he go on and do screenwriting or something? I think he still writes comics. Okay. So I thought it was cute. You dress a monkey up in a suit. You give him some guns. He's a hit man. He's a, he's a mercenary. He joins a team with Deadpool. Okay, cute. That's fine. I like monkeys, whatever. I didn't put much stock in it. Um, And so I only put the show on as background noise, or I thought we might do it for something like this, where it's like, okay, we'll touch on it as part of a, you know, a speed round kind of thing. And the first episode was basically what I expected it to be. I expected it to be profane and violent and have attitude and stuff. It was, it was what I was expecting. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. It was fine. I think I caught a little bit of the second episode and then I kind of drifted away and I just leave it on in the background. And then I come back into the room of several episodes in and I catch a part of an episode and it's like kind of heavy. And I'm like surprised at how heavy the shit is. And so that, so I start watching that and the next episode also has a lot of emotional heft to it. And I'm like, oh shit, this is not the show that I thought it was going to be. It started out as that show and it became something more than that. So I went back, watched the episodes I missed, rewatched the episodes I'd already watched again, watched the finale, and then I put it on for back material again because I enjoyed it so much that I liked having it on just while that I was doing other great. shit. Like Jason Sudeikis it's weird because I like him fine you know I, I my girlfriend watched Ted Lasso I'm, I, I'm not going to show up for a show like that the thing that I liked him in he was in a movie called Sleeping with Other People I think it's called it was him and Allison Brie and he's kind of like a womanizer in that show and I've never understood it's like him and uh, Hater uh, where they're like they don't strike me as being the kind of guys that would be like sex machines like girls with love and stuff and yet these guys are pulling women way above what I would think would be their, their class they punch it above their weight punch it way above their weight and so I'm watching this movie and like Allison Brie who 
I thought was okay in Mad Men, but she was playing a very arch, like she was trying to play period in a show that really the other actors were playing more like realistic, you know, peak television performances and she's playing 50s housewife. So I, I wasn't really too keen on her. I'd never watched Community, but then I watched her in that and she was fucking fine and I enjoyed her character. And I love how she interacted with Sudeikis. So I kind of like Sudeikis, but only in certain things. He's not something I want to watch, go out and watch for. And so he's playing kind of a similar character in, in Hit Monkey, and I could definitely see where that would get on somebody's nerves because he's basically again talking about Hater. Hater's got that show where he's a hitman, and then Sudeikis has a show now where he's a hitman. And I'm not sure how that thing how it's going to work for me long term because he is an obnoxious asshole by design. But then again, his character evolves, and we get yeah, to find Barry. out more about his backstory. What's really weird is we get into the monkey's backstory, yeah, and that's heavy, and it has a really weird spiritual component and a, like a lot of emotional journey and stuff. And the animation is so much better on Hit Monkey than what if you get will you admit it's to a that different style of animation it's yeah it's a good versus bad for starters it's well animated and i think it's a situation where because it's hulu and probably i know jeff Loeb has a hand in that show and so it's not marvel studios and i think they've tried to bury it but like you and i went to some bookstores and some comic shops yeah. we can't find hit nope. monkey anywhere it's that guy when they when that uh, shop owner tell you that uh anything hit man related hit monkey, man monkey yeah. related was just gone yeah it's just show. gone and i looked online to try to see if i could get something that away and like all the prices are through the fucking roof so i think hit monkey is kind of a little sleeper hit and yeah i, I love that character I, I would i would like to have a hit monkey shirt i just i love specifically hit monkey i like the hitman character too i like some of his peripheral characters and i want to read the comic books and one of the things i love about the show is at the end of every single episode they say go out and buy the trade paperback yeah. bullets and bananas i'm trying guys i want to read that shit especially because there's more continuity than i realized like um one of the major characters in the cartoon is created for the cartoon it's actually apparently supposed to be Ogun from old Wolverine and X-Men comic books. Which one? Ogun, the, the red demon-faced guy from yeah. the Kitty Pryde Wolverine miniseries. Well, I, I I like the way they played up the Silver Samurai. <laughs> yeah, you got the Silver Samurai in there, thing. and you've got... Okay, fat, okay so Fryho would love Lady this. Lady Bullseye? No, Fryho would love this. They had Fat Cobra in there. Mm -hmm. Fat Cobra's one of mine. Now, he's from the favorite. Iron Fist Matt yes. Fraction series, right? Fucking loved him in this one. Um, even, that was uh, a cool-ass fucking episode, Lady, Even man. Lady Deadpool, which, or Lady uh, Bullseye, which I thought at first was kind of like, she's actually kind of cool. It was kind of a cool idea for her. Do you fear her? They do such a great job of setting up, oh shit, we're in deep trouble dude, with this she person. Arrives, she's like the fucking T-1000. She's a plague, dude. She's a yeah. plague. Yeah. Like, if you if you come into contact with her, you may die. Like, she's like the cartel in Breaking Bad. Yeah. A one-woman cartel. Liked, I liked Fat Cobra. I thought Fat Cobra was cool. Mm -hmm. That whole um, that whole episode in the prison is fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah, I thought that was so fucking bizarre. I, I just love the dialogue. Mm -hmm. I love the dialogue. I, I caught myself, like, listening to Monkey, like, when he's talking, you're like, okay, what did Monkey really say? Because I'm trying to read the subtitles as fast as possible. Now, on yours, there was a time on mine, I don't know why, again, I was watching on my phone. There's a time where Hit Monkey's talking to the spiritual dad, mm -hmm. and I didn't have any dialogue, so I have no idea. But it was, it must have been. Heavy. I don't remember any instances where you don't have okay, the captions. Maybe it was just my phone. Yeah. And then when he when he comes into that second tribe, I was like, holy. Yeah, shit, that was a fucking dude. intense episode, man. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I, I I I just I love that character. I love how they're represented. I absolutely positively convinced you're not going to get a second season because I'm confident. Well, no, they, the Marvel's they, trying so, to bury that shit. Well, they, so they I. Find Follow some of their stuff on Twitter, and they were talking about how they have ten seasons. They'd love to do a second season, but doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. But yet they're they going to give that? us that. But something along the lines of that. Yeah. Now, did they? Did we have any kind of numbers? Are they now giving out nah. any streaming numbers? I don't. And the funny thing is, so on YouTube, you'll see guys like, "Why aren't people talking about Hit Monkey?" Like mm -hmm. these guys are trying to pump it up because you're you're right. Dude. I heard about Hit Monkey and had no desire to watch. I was like, "Oh, this looks like." Because I I put I I uh I put it in the same pool as Deadpool. Not a, I'm not a huge yeah. Deadpool fan. That whole Deadpool universe I'm, it's just not my thing so i kind of felt that was part of it so i was like i don't really care and honestly after watching fucking um the fucking robot chicken ripoff uh oh modok <laughs> they called me big head <sighs> one day that big beautiful womb wrecking head of yours is going to change the world world time to change the world by bringing it to its knees attack the future is modok Modok! And do you know what Modok stands for? Mental organism designed only for killing. Ah! For killing. Where does he go at night? Nobody knows. Oh, 
no one took the cans out? Come on! Ah, shit. We have to tell the kids about us. Kids, she's lost her mind. You have to stop Moda, her. Moda, what are you telling the kids? I'm comforting them. And if you tell her I said any of this, this will be one of the many divorces where it is the kid's fault. I'm Wonder Man. Pending Avenger, underwear model, and lover of your wife. This is an outrage! Ah! I shall reclaim my family! I shall reclaim my destiny! Iron Man! Cheap shot to the back of the head, I know. But I was actually aiming for literally any other part of your body. Yeah! Woohoo! Do 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 right? Do 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 Am I good businessman? Uh yeah, about that. We're bankrupt. What? I'm sorry. I thought this coffee was for everyone. Modoc, I was really disappointed because I I I Modoc I like, fucking sucks. I like Patton, but just it's not funny. I just don't like the I, I was given the thumbs down when I suggested we watch it. My wife watched like the trailer for it and she's like, No. Yeah. And I was like, it's got a weird, like high rotten tomatoes rating, and she's like, No, we're not watching it. I'm like, Okay, guess we're not watching Modoc. But then I never heard anything from you guys either. I've never, so I was like, Okay, I never I tried I, watching like, it when it came I got out. Four it episodes in and I got four episodes in and I was just like, I, I don't want to watch this anymore. Like I'm it, not it was the opposite of Hit Monkey. I put it on as background. I, I watched some of the ep- first episode, wasn't into it. Would come in and out of the series. Never hooked me. In fact, it kept pushing me further and further away. Not like that. Ro- that robot chicken absurdity works in you know the Little, sketch small comedy. Increments. Small. When you try to do that as a narrative over a yeah. number of episodes, I I, I like Pat Oswalt. I, I liked him on Agents of Shield. I like that he's a Marvel booster and everything. There's way too much fucking Pat Oswalt in Marvel materials. I'm I'm getting sick of the guy but specifically modok that's not what i want i want modok to be big and ridiculous and like but it's still a super villain it's still like cosmic yeah. when you've got his like daughter running around and she's got the same head as him the fact that they made them explicitly jewish and this whole thing where it feels like it's othering like like those weird kooky jews with their floating heads and their laser beams and shit it's like what the fuck is this shit i i it's not funny it's offensive no. it's stupid it's badly acted it's badly written i don't even know what the fuck was happening there at the end it ends on a cliffhanger. I have no I, desire I to see any more like of the show. Three and a half the animation sucks. Um, I, I just was not a fan of it. So it's terrible. When I saw that, I just did not feel the need or compel. I wasn't compelled to watch Hit Monkey. Yeah. You kept telling me to watch it. I saw a couple of guys on YouTube. I was talk insistent. About it. I was like, dude, you need to watch this. Well, there was a couple of guys on YouTube that I follow that were like doing the same thing. So I'm like, let me give it a shot. Fuck it. I almost binged it in like three days. I just yeah. kept watching them because they're so good. Yeah. You you could definitely easily go from one episode to another yeah. one. I feel like D- Disney has told like. Like Ryan Reynolds and told the fans, "Oh, we're definitely going to do Deadpool. We're definitely going to do Deadpool." Oh, they will. No, I don't oh, believe it. Will. I do not believe you're ever going to see Deadpool three. I know that Disney does not want to put out R-rated shit. You know that because you sat in a meeting. They don't want R-rated shit. They won't fucking. They fucking censor like Wolverine butt in the Disney streaming app and shit. They don't want any R-rated Marvel they're, shit. They don't want R-rated associations. Hulu. That's what Hulu's for. But not oh, for Marvel. No but not for Marvel. Marvel. They don't want. They don't. They want Marvel to get as big an audience as possible as mainstream audience they don't but want anything that's going to do, offend they're people they're going to do adult shit because they want yes I don't buy it I don't buy it and I, I think that they buried and also because it's Fox so if they're doing the, the uh, continuation of the Fox movies I think it's a problem for the rights and I think it's because people have their fingers in those pies I think that guys like Singer and Kinberg and uh, Laura Schuller Donner they all continue to make money if you're continuing to make stuff from that from that no, series I think, I think there'll be one more Deadpool they'll, they'll do a, a swan song maybe yeah and that's it I don't buy it I think I they're going to fucking bullshit us and stall until Reynolds is too damn old to be putting on the costume and doing that shit. I don't think it's ever going to happen. And I think that Hit Monkey is proof of that because that show is fucking awesome. It's one of the best things Marvel's done. And they haven't, haven't, there's no promotion. It never had a big enough audience. Because they didn't fucking promote it. But even even with the books, it was never big. Deadpool was a big fucking hit series. It's, it's, you know, I don't buy it. I feel like I saw MODOK everywhere though. Yeah, dude, that's apples and oranges, dude. Yeah, I feel like I saw MODOK everywhere. Like they blew their load on MODOK and then so they didn't have anything left over from Hit Monkey? I think that's possible. I just, 
just I saw Modoc promotion actively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any Hit Monkey promotional stuff. Nope, nope. It's like that show doesn't even exist. Yeah. Hulu. If you go onto Hulu, it'll be on the Hulu page for a while. I don't even know if it's on the main page anymore. And it's a goddamn shame because that's a great fucking yeah. show. Well, uh, what if he shows up in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness? <laughs> that would be amazing. I mean, I, I if they make Deadpool three and Hit Monkey isn't in it, I I I'd call foul. I, that's that'd be a travesty. As animated, like a, I actually, like, I, like no, a Roger. I want, I, I Roger want a live Rabbit. action. I want him to go like fucking rocket on no, that no, shit. No, no, I, no. I want a, I want a Roger Rabbit where he's no, no, animated. I want, I, want, I want Deadpool to have a blade in his hand and he's starting to weird, see weird shit again. And then Hit Monkey pops up and starts talking to him. I still haven't seen Deadpool two, by the way. I have. We'll I have. discuss that. That's in from the, the first X-Men. one. I'm working on this, by the way. Just put it out there. I'm trying to watch all the Fox X Men stuff. Jesus Christ! I mean, no wonder you're so demented. All the Fox X Men stuff. So what, what, what do you? Want? I I already did that. What do you want? No, all of yes, it. Yes, I watched all the X Men stuff. I watched Generation X. Oh no, I didn't go that far. Back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm working. I'm working. I'm not, I'm not, yeah. You I don't sick hate, bastard. I don't yes. hate myself that much. Yeah, I'm calling the suicide hotline right now. <laughs> no, so, so the the intention. Did you masturbate with razor blades while you watched it? Because it's the only way. The it, it, sometimes it felt that way. Um, more demented. Uh, <laughs> Generation X or seven. <laughs> Uh, but, but but I saw Generation X when it first came out. Me too. I watched that shit when it came out on Fox. I wanted. I, I was hoping we could do it last year in 2021 because I wanted to wrap up the X Men stuff because I wanted to do a bunch of Spider Man stuff. What about this year. Legion? I'm working on Legion. Uh, Legion. I've, I've heard Legion is like good though. It's pretty good so yeah, far. Really? I, I watched okay. like the first half and I liked it. It's yeah. only one season, right? Or is it two? No, three. Really? Oh yeah. shit! I'm way behind. Yeah, it's like uh, I think 20 some odd episodes total. Okay, let's keep going. Keep yeah. Going. The point being is, I'm, I'm uh, eventually we're gonna go over the X stuff. Uh, Deadpool. Two will be in the mix, so watch it. Don't watch it. Both, okay, so we'll now we're going to talk there. Eternals. You are about to meet the greatest warriors the world has ever known. Legendary, fashionable, powerful. Well, I'm sure that was a lot of fun for you. It was. On November 5th, the Marvel Universe play nice becomes eternal. So, what's your superpower? You know that your babysitting privileges are completely revoked, right? Marvel Studios Eternals, rated PG-13, only in theaters November 5th. I guess. You want to go to Eternals now? I, I haven't seen it. You still haven't watched it? No. I'm really? I'm not surprised. I, I was thought explaining you were going this to Mixer Fixer. M- Mixer Fixed It. Mixer Mixed Mixer 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 It's just too long. So I, we put the kids to bed at 8, 8.30, and I come up here. I'm not staying up for... Three, we'll watch a one hour you know serial killer documentary like most white people do and then I was okay we'll watch episode two of the serial killer documentary tomorrow just to make sure you know the kids aren't falling along the lines of the serial killer yeah I just can't or are yeah. uh, I, I just can't get I can't block out three hours for Eternals yet I'm working on it you don't have to watch it in one sitting no I, I, I don't, I don't no, recommend no, no, you watch, watch it in one sitting yeah I, I can't not. do it I try to do that with another movie uh, we I, split up Snyder Cut and that's it we're not gonna yeah. but yeah, that literally had chapters so we yeah. were able to stop it so fix it you watched it yeah did you did you watch it theatrically? No, you watched on cable. I'm gonna die for that movie. Or sorry, on streaming. <laughs> gonna die for that. So I'll put not. my life on the line for this shit. <laughs> Go on, put, I'm not. That's not the hell I die on my. You got to put the R. Kelly quote in. I'm fighting for my <laughs> life. My life's on the line for whatever reason. Anyway. Yeah, uh, I like fighting it. for my life. Yo, killing me with this. <laughs> I liked it. Was it the best Marvel movie? No. Was it a different? I like the quote to saying that Marvel made their first DC movie. Yeah. I like that quote. Well, there is no way it's as bad as I'm hearing it is. There's no well, way. My, my favorite ah. quote was, it's like an X-Men movie where the entire team is nothing but Cyclopses. <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> it, it's... <sighs> okay, you, yeah, like, just... you, you kind of like everything. So when you go... I mean, it, that means it probably sucks. Nah, it's it's fine. It's it's uh, fine. Fine for you is absolute shit. Well, maybe for you. For me, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't. I wasn't like blown away or anything by it. I kind of saw the ending coming. Don't spoil the ending for me because yeah. I do actually want to watch. Oh movie. no 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 no! Don't watch the movie. Don't watch the ending. Or you're just saying don't worry about the spoiler. All of that. Yeah. Saying, okay. The whole thing. You yes. said so. You think it sucked really bad. Worst DC movie. Worst, worst DC movie. There's no way it's the worst. D- worst well, you DC liked movie. Wonder Woman. Oh, and you liked Wonder Woman. 84. Yeah. Wonder worst Woman, worst that, DC That's movie. what I meant. No, that's what I meant. Wonder Woman 84 is one of the worst no, movies. It, 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 I should, I should point out worst modern DC movie, like the Snyderverse, that kind of thing. It's not as bad as like a Superman Force, anything like that. We're not going to that I would territory. put Wonder Woman 84 But, but, with but that, definitely yeah. not as good as Wonder Woman 1984. Definitely what? not. What? No, no, no. I no. definitely put it above We're not going to rehash this. The movie was fucking yeah. horrible. Yeah, I know. It's, it's definitely better than that. Trust it's me. It's not. It's really yes. not. No. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As bad as Wonder Woman 1984 was, speaking objectively, 
based on the reaction, at least it's interesting in the th- ways in which it's flawed, where there's nothing remotely interesting about the Eternals oh, at all. Oh, fuck that. No way, dude. It is such Wonder a... Wonder Woman 84 bear. was like... Let, uh, here, let, let me... I actually have a recent Wonder Woman 1984 story, if you'd like sure, to hear it. Sure, go for it. Very short. I was at a playground, okay? Well, my, let my kids play, had the headphones in, as I normally do, ignoring the shit out of them. And I re- recognize another parent from my neighborhood there, because uh, he and I have talked a couple times. Turns out, he's a huge, uh, like, comic book fan, right? In fact, he said his neighbor two down had a Loki season finale party with like green and purple balloon oh, wow. arches where you would walk up to their house under arches and everybody was dressed up like f- whatever all the fucking characters were. And I was like, how did I not notice this? But they're also like weird people that walk their cat on a leash. So whatever. <laughs> but it's fucking weird. Anyway, so we were talking. Oh, I wish they'd invite us. We could go and say, nerds. I, I wanted to show up to be like, wow. Like, you know, but uh, anyway. Wow. But, but that just kind of. Wow. wow. To say, wow. <laughs> So that got us started talking, and then we eventually got to talking about the DC movies. And he was apparently like a DC fan, and even he was just like, "Wonder Woman was eighty four was like one of the worst fucking movies he's ever seen in his life." And I was like, "Okay, this is a completely independent observer." Yeah. Okay, and this guy was like, "What were they thinking? It was fucking horrible." Like, and we, he, you know, we cursed on a playground with children around. He was that <laughs> upset about. It. I've been there. I've done that. Yes, yes. We, I mean, we, we we didn't, and and he didn't have that strong reaction about anything we talked about. And he was like, "That movie was fucking awful." This is better than that so you'll be fine okay i, I will i will say that i did a podcast with four i, I think total to one woman and it was like me and fellow gen xer paul k bisson against the youngs and the youngs were very negative or pretty negative and we were like trying to get each other's backs where it's like no this movie was all right it had some good stuff i still like a lot of things about one woman i did before but right, the, 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 the housewives and the karens never showed up the way that i thought they might i don't think you know they, they seem like the movie right, sank right, like a fucking where, stone where did this bad movie touch you Badly, bro. She hijacked a plane from the Smithsonian, flew it across the Atlantic, and then shot a bunch of. I'm not brown, saying it's and then killed a bunch of brown people. Yeah. Okay. Even oh, yeah. though she's a oh, yeah. fucking oh, yeah. Israeli. I, uh, I cop to the fucking flaws. No, 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 no. I just the cheetah. I just lost my like silver. Cheetah alone was such. Yeah, it, it was terrible. Oh Jesus, dude. That the movie is cringe. I thought I was watching. What was that? Uh, Robert Townsend movie, Meteor Man. Mm. Meteor Man is better than Wonder Woman '84 in my book. Okay, so go back to Eternal. Yeah. At least your hatred of Wonder Woman, like. You're looking at it and you're going, what the fuck are they thinking? This is awful. That's interesting. Right, There's okay. nothing interesting about Eternals. It's just there. From, it's from like, an artistic perspective, it did get a reaction from me. Was it the reaction that they were going for? Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Probably not. It got a reaction. Yeah. The, you, 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 Which the, I have a weird the, the correct reaction to Eternals is slumber. You just fall asleep during that shit. Like, I can't tell I mean, you. The, like, the, the villains are boring. I'll, they're not interesting. None it's, of the, it's, the, it's none of the you Thanos have. snap no. tie-in no. stuff no. is worth a shit uh, or anything. No. No. I, I personally like the whole celestial aspect of it. That's what hooked me because I like the you like the celestial the Marvel gra- yeah the Marvel galactic you know the I like the Marvel hierarchy of the galaxy too, characters yeah, yeah where, where they have like the oh like there's always some level where it's like you don't say their names because they're so high up and shit. well there's like I, the in betweener and the fucking Lord Chaos yeah. and Master Order and ego yeah you know, in the infinity like I Champions like those of the universe. characters I always I always yeah. found those characters very interesting this is kind of like a bridge into their world so I was like okay with that the Eternals themselves have always been boring to me. Like, I just don't give a well, shit. So were the Guardians of the Galaxy, but they made a movie that was worth a shit out of that. Guardians of the Galaxy yeah, carried the Galaxy like a 60 some odd issue series. Eternals. Yeah, dude, I, I read that stuff that that's based off of. It was really good. Where Cosmo and all that showed up, that was really good stuff. It was Abbott and. Uh, yeah, Abnett Lanning. People really liked yeah, that. Dude, material. that was fucking great. Well, not just me, that, but I mean, me and Jim Fry Valentino, read that a long time ago. When Jim yeah, Valentino but, but, did Guardians. But the Guardians of my comic reading was fucking Charlie 57 and. <laughs> but that Victory book still lasted five years. That's true. It did go for a while it yeah. went for a while yeah so uh, i mean I, i'll give frank that eternals doesn't have that um i think what it the biggest problem it had was there was no real connection to the rest of the marvel universe did you feel uh that there was a the marvel formula was at work in it or was no, it or, strictly, or was it did it buck the marvel it, it, formula no, it's, a, it's a dc boring. movie no, it's a dc really movie, yeah. so it didn't even feel I, like a no weird... i think i think whoever wrote it like shang chi that's a marvel still movie felt like a fucking yeah, marvel yeah, movie yeah. no it, this feels like a fucking dc movie really it just yeah. got that's why when I heard that quote I was like does it look yes. good oh, it's it attractive are looking, the costumes yeah. okay yeah. The costumes are nice okay. yeah costumes they are nice they try to do the humor stuff that, no that's it. very DC trying to do Marvel type of humor yeah, that was, it, there was nothing flat. the only thing that was 
good was the valet. He was yeah, he was funny. Who? The valet, the personal oh, assistant. Yeah, 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 yeah he yeah, was cool. He was my, he was he's my favorite funny. character in the fucking movies. The valet. Yeah, he was pretty funny. He was pretty funny. Yeah. Watch what the video cameras all the time, different mm-hmm. cameras. Yeah, that was pretty funny. And I did like uh, what's his name, that actor, Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah, I yeah, did he was like. Good. I did like his yeah. character. Was he gay? <laughs> like the character. I, I, we're not comfortable talking about this. I don't no, know. No, but I, 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 so. I just because I, I yeah. Like Neil Young again. He's showing up. No, but I I thought he like I enjoyed his character. I also like the mind reader guy. You know, it's funny. People talked a bunch of shit about Drew, but I thought he was all right. I couldn't figure out was did he have a deal besides being like Irish though? Uh, he was just there's some great scenes in this movie. Like I really like the Aztec. Great, temple. the G word. Yes, like Aztec one word because they're fighting over whether they should help mankind and they're going back and forth on that. And it's an scene, interesting concept. Yeah, it's it, they're interesting. Con- it looks great. I thought it looked cool where everybody you have the conquistadors and Aztecs fighting and he basically just makes everyone stop and walk off and that's why the Aztecs vanish. Because and then they all have just, a philosophical argument for like five minutes about whether or not that was the correct thing for them to yeah, do. Yeah, because they, you know, how did... Um, the rest and that's the, actually when they break up because they can't resolve that they, they can't agree on the course of action. Yeah. And and Salma Hayek, who's the leader, tells I, them, just go your separate ways. Do you want to know what the, the trailers and stuff remind me of? Yeah. It reminds me of Dune. Kind of. Yeah. The Ollie, Dune. I did I like say. that Angelina Jolene had like a PTSD type effect. I thought that was kind of neat. It got Tomb annoying. Raider, it got annoying near the end of the movie, but it was a neat concept because you don't want everybody to be happy and shiny and... It, it definitely Besties. feels like you wasted Angelina Jolie. A little though. bit. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Really, though? Well, really, everybody, though. Everybody in the movie is wasted because nobody gets enough people. time to develop. There's too many people. Way too many people. Fucking, even Black Knight didn't really get his like, God, shine. They didn't do, what a fucking, I assumed that they were going to do something remotely substantial, yeah. especially because you have two of the Stark brothers and a character named Cersei all in the same movie in the same scenes together. Not the Tony Stark brothers. You're talking about Stark from uh, the Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Got it. So, yeah. You threw me off for a second. I was like, yeah, what? Sorry. I was like, oh, the other uh, Stark. Yeah. yeah, but no, they they Black Knight is like at the beginning of the movie, and he has a little bitty phone cameo in the middle, and then he's in the fucking stinger, and it's like, why did you even bother with this shit? Yeah. You yeah, know, he, he had no business and th- th- in a movie that's already got way too many fucking characters. The last thing you need to do is yeah, go, oh, character. by the way, Cersei's boyfriend is going to be the Black Knight in a yeah. future movie, but not this movie. But we'll show you the Ebon Blade, kind of, sorta, but not really because the Ebon Blade well, is also supposed. I did to be like the, the fact yeah. that Blade showed up though. That is cool. A Blade, but they'd already said the Ebon Blade was in the 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 ship. So, because no, the, no, no. the, the fast chick runs fast chick, uh, she they, no, they reference to the huh? Blade, the vampire hunter. Oh, Blade's in there, yeah. He's the one that tells Black Knight, Oh, that's the voice there. Yep. I didn't know who the fuck that yeah, was. I didn't get that. Okay, yeah, that's Blade. So, Blade's there for the Blade. No, scene? I, I, apparently, Dark or Black Knight and him are gonna have some kind of interaction. Okay, so. it's just me. I, I, I would rather just have him be in a Black Knight movie and we don't have time or an movie. Avengers yeah. fucking movie. Yeah, nah, I just now, don't. Now, what did you think of the other stinger? Oh, god, oh, it was horrible. Horrible! Oh my god, he just, it was and terrible. he just bitched about Patton, so that's what's so funny about well, it. Well, you know, literally, that's part of the problem was that I, I don't want Peter Dinklage playing Pip the Troll, and I, I should have absolutely no, no, should've. no, no. He should not have. He is the wrong guy to play that character. You need somebody very different, somebody who's way more of a, like a degenerate. But did you watch Game of Thrones? No, but he he's, drinks, he's he still, whores, no, he no, but stuff. he's but he has a he's he's too classy, he's too refined. Dude, he's that's too, your man he's crush. Cool. He, he is my man fine. crush. He is my man. I love I love Peter Dinklage. Um, Every Everybody does great. Yeah, he also, I've never heard anybody say a bad thing about. No, him. no, no. But Pip the Troll is supposed to be kind of gross and and skeevy and and dirty and low class and you know that that's he's Danny thing. DeVito. Not about Danny say, DeVito. From it's, the, it's troll. Always sunny. the troll. Yeah. The troll. The yeah. troll. Yeah, yeah. You have to pay the troll toll to get into this boy's exactly. Hole. <laughs> exactly. Boy soul. <laughs> boy soul. <laughs> but again, way too much Pat Oswald. But also the fact that he's CGI. Yeah. So he's that, all fucking rubbery and shit. Yeah, that kind and of then you've got Pat's voice. Like, wait, is this? Patton Modoc or is this Patton from Agents of Shield? Yeah. No, it's Patton in a whole other fucking Shield. Great, awesome. That's what I want. Is I don't have enough fucking Patton Oswalt in my life. I don't like the guy too much. Fucking Patton Oswalt, horrible looking. But the worst thing is fucking Star Fox. Oh, he looked awful. And like, if you thought that fucking fuckface in the fucking Game of Thrones, the fucking oh, Ed Sheeran, Dude, that was a lot of Ed Sheeran took you out of Game of Thrones when Harry Styles walks out. In that bright red and white costume with the fucking hair, I'm just like it took it draw kicked me out of the goddamn Marvel universe for that shit. That was I, sent him back to the little DC universe. I, I can't imagine universe. trying to watch a movie with that dude in the midst of everything. Uh, Holy shit! There's supposed to be a sequel. Oh, 
I hated that shit. Yeah. Supposed to be a sequel. Kind of the worst Marvel movie. Kind of. Because here's the thing. I don't know. There, there are worse. There, are, there are like objectively. Thor two is really bad. I, I'm getting there. It's I'm getting not, there. Thor two is not really yeah. bad. Go watch it again. Yeah. It's not that bad. Here's, here's the thing. There are objectively worst movies in the Marvel universe. Not shot as well. But the thing is, even those bad Marvel movies still have like the Marvel superheroes that you kind of love, and they still have like close connections to the other Marvel universe and stuff. Robert Downey Jr. is in Iron Man three. Yeah. For yeah. how shitty. Yeah. Is. For how shitty is. For this movie. None of these characters are worth a shit. Like, and, and, and it, what, what kills me is like, this is like the fucking Rainbow Coalition up with people fucking of the Marvel Universe. They tried to have one of everything in this fucking movie and they all suck. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean thing? I mean races and yeah. differently abled people and, and all kinds of that kind of good shit. This is the movie where they're trying to get everybody into it and none of these characters are worth a shit. None of them are developed enough to be worth a damn. Like, they get the guy that was so fucking cool and trained to Busan and he does fucking nothing but babysit Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Okay? You got Kamel fucking Nanjaj, who's so fucking hot in that sh- picture, it makes me question my sexuality. And he's kind of cute in the movie. He's got a few amusing scenes, but that's about it. He does the whole pew pew thing, you know, whatever. You got fucking uh, Rob Stark playing Superman. Still think he's a better Superman than Tyler Holsher. But who's that? The guy from the show? The guy from the TV show, yeah. yeah. He looks weird. Yeah, I hate right. fucking shave, man. You're Some, Superman. It looks Shaving like he's from face. New York. Yeah. New I th- York. I think that he was perfectly fine as Icarus, but Icarus is like your fourth tier Superman knockoff and it sh- and that's how he was played. I, I, I'm trying not to get into spoiler territory. Too late. <laughs> the ending of that character is remarkably stupid. Yeah. Like it's one of those God things damn, where- now I want to watch it more than ever. <laughs> where school children are watching that and he's going like, really? You didn't do, you did that? You did it? I kind of feel like the, the Chloe Zhao is Chinese, right? She's not like a hyphen. She's Chinese, Chinese, right? You know how we make movies Very uncomfortable. set in a place, you know how we make movies set in a place like China and what we're going to do- and damn Neil Young Get out of here. I can cancel us. You know. look at my we don't have the listeners to cancel. Get out of here. Yeah. You know how we'll make a movie like The Wall with Matt Damon, where it's like this total fucking Eurocentric movie that just sprinkles a little Chinese stuff in there for flavor. Got a little MSG in there and that's about it, right? <laughs> I feel like Chloe Zhao looked at Judeo-Christian beliefs and she sprinkled a little of that in this movie. Like the whole thing where, again, I'm trying to avoid spoilers, but like the whole thing where the Eternals somehow end up with free will and they rebel against the wishes of their God which is very much like how mankind was in the Bible or how the angels and the, the war in heaven, all that kind of stuff. And it feels like somebody who's only got a passive familiarity with Christianity sprinkled a little, little on that, put a little vanilla in the, the mix to give it a little flavor, but didn't really understand it and didn't really explore it. And it's just sort of there as like a little extra something. And so you introduce this concept, but you don't do anything substantial with it. And it's just like, we're a Christian nation. We know all this shit. You're not really blowing our minds by sprinkling a little of Christianity in there. So what the fuck do you even do that for? What the fuck does it even mean? It's so long and tries to do so much while accomplishing so little. Nobody's wearing a t-shirt with these characters on it. Right. I don't care. You, the the, the, the toys one, are you, definitely you got, peg warmers. You got the one Indian guy in all of Marvel. Nobody's buying that action figure, even if you're the Indian yeah, kid. Hold, okay? hold my Shang-Chi. You thought the Shang-Chi's right. warmed the pegs for a while? <laughs> it's just so much and nothing. And it's so boring. And it's, it's like you've got nothing to kind of lift it up. So it's just like this thing where if this were not a Marvel movie, this would be some Jupiter ascending kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this would be one of these things that just like fell off the fucking face of the earth and nobody would talk about it again. But because it's Marvel, it's just that Marvel failure and oh, we got the Academy Award winning director for that no, one. No, no, I, I think yeah. still nobody's talking about it. This again, and, and I think that Spider Man sweeping it under the rug. Right. Hopefully, Feige's not up his own ass and he's just like, okay, yeah, maybe we. Maybe you need, need not Iron do. Man and Captain America. No, and what Thor you do is you just shit, make yeah. it a TV show. Like, do you realize story. how easy this is? You realize how easy this is? All you gotta do is just fucking recast Tony Stark. You realize how easy it is? Yeah. It's so easy, but it's like they don't want to do I still think that... I, I You remember I've been saying well, this I, since the very beginning. Just fucking recast. Wait, wait, I, just I, fucking I, do I heard it. a theory that I like. That they said at the end of Strange, he breaks the universe and... Which is what or, this motherfucker okay. said five years ago. Yeah. Either Strange happen. or Kang break the universe and it's almost like a reset and everyone gets recast. Yeah, that I mean, is what he said like yeah, five years ago. Yeah. And not only that, but you've got the all the Spider-Man actors and stuff in the Spider-Man movies and they're going to do the same thing, I guess, with Ma- Multiverse of Madness where we'll bring back some of the guys who were in the old shit. So it's setting you up for, no, we're not going it, to... It, Robert Downey Jr. is not to be all into all of Iron Man. We can have another Iron Man. I think yeah. that they're just priming the audience for that. And it's going to be Harry Styles. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Harry Styles is going to be all of the Avengers at once. <laughs> it's going to be like a, the clumps. <laughs> well, and we're definitely getting the fucking young Avengers Big too. Mama's House or whatever. <laughs> oh, dear God. The fatties from... Uh, um... Look at Neil Young again.
<laughs> well, I'm thinking of the movie with uh, Robert, Down- man, well, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Ben Stiller. Zoolander? Tropic Thunder. Oh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Well, that's another one. Oh, hey, do you hear about that movie that got buried where he plays a Mexican? Who? Robert Downey Jr.? Like, Jimmy Fox directed a comedy a couple of three years ago, and specifically Robert Downey Jr. was supposed to be playing a Mexican in the fashion of Lazarus. The What, what was the character's name? Something Lazarus? So anyway, so that movie hasn't come out, and it's been years now, and people just think that, like, somebody got paid off, they're just, like, never going to release that shit and forget that shit I ever mean, happened. I, just mulligan the shit out of that. I just watched like, Highlander David, where Sean Connery plays a Spaniard. Spaniard you know? Right. Uh, and he's even rolling. Well, that, that's his, the funny he's thing. He's rolling his arms, and it's like, what the fuck is this? Later, man. Why were we okay with this? Like, this you have weird. a friend. Well, we, no, we were never okay with that. We always made. We weren't okay that. with it, but we were okay with it. Yeah, yeah. Well, just like and you know the Russian ship commander with a Scottish accent. But of course, what's especially funny is you've got a French guy playing a Scot, and you got a Scot playing an Egyptian Spaniard. He's like, what the fuck? It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. It's so bizarre. Oh, fighter of the night, man. Oh. Champion of the sun. <laughs> oh, You're a master of karate and, and friendship for everyone. Damn man. Damn man. Oh, nice. We'll get the fighter of the night, man. Oh, champion of the sun. Permanent Marvelite Maximus followers. Billy Hines. BT. Cap Marvelite. Carol Ann talks comics. Classic X Men. Clint Stoker. Comics for everyone. DC Infinite covers. Dwarven bibliophile. East to West with Nick and Rob. Hello Berlin. Taros Emin. Hernan Fernan. It's Toy Bunker. Iesu Murato. Jean Sinclair. Justin Pyle. Millions Travel. Moose the Hobo with the High Kick Matson. P. Cycle Mentalist. Roger Pre. Sal Abenanti, Star Rocket Radio, Stop, Let's Team Up, a comic podcast, Strontium Pod, and Tomes of Evil, a comic book villain podcast. So those sounds pretty cool, actually. Keepers of the Favorites Flame, Aaron Henley, Adam Blackmoon, Dr. Ange, Kelso Ventura, Dirk Ashton, Jeffrey Brown, They, Them, John with MWC Podcast, MB, Mike and Send Aliens to Me, Nick Spence, Relatively Geeky Podcast Network, Right Between the Eyes Podcast, Rodrigo, Salacious Rum, Scott X, Shanna Banana, Sister Discoid, Trekker Talk, Weird Warriors Podcast, and Xenozoic Xenophiles. Retweet frantic ones include CH, Canoes, Lawrence, Star Child Comics, Talk Nerdy to Me, Thunderbolt Media, and Tim Price the Podcrasher. Canoes wrote, Thanks Rolled Spine, this is one episode I can't listen to yet. Speaking of Shang-Chi, still haven't watched this yet. Shake my head. I need to see it before it leaves the cinema as I don't want to wait until it is on Disney+. Plus. Chris Dunford wrote, Honored and grateful, but not hard to be a fan of such a truly excellent podcast. Weird Warriors wrote, wrote, honor to be counted among such luminaries. Doc Strange gave us the office thank you gift. Mike at Sunday Disney wrote, I know it don't speak for everyone, but I really enjoyed that movie. Martin Gray added, I like this film a lot. MB wrote, the fact that I enjoyed it despite the ending being pretty weak and it featuring the worst and second worst characters of the MCU, Katie and Trevor, speaks well of the rest of the movie. Most entertaining part of Iron Man 3 is a low bar to clear for me. It's in my bottom three MCU films. Marvel Universe Online Project wrote, it was a worthy addition to the MCU, the action the spectacle is everything I would want in the Shang-Chi film. Dr. Ange added, like Harrison Ford, I'm getting frantic. Like Sting, I'm tantric. CH wrote, I'm not frantic, you are. Side note, that's a hell of a good film, which I haven't watched in a while. Polanski is a child rapist piece of shit, but he can make really good films. I should have pointed out the film is called Frantic 1988, directed by Roman Polanski. Harrison Ford was great in it. Liam Neeson film Unknown 2011 borrows a lot of the feel and tone from the film as well. Odell Abner Dracula wrote, not everyone is good at everything. Some people are great at making movies but suck at respecting human dignity and or not raping children curiously we had a whole aside about that sort of thing related to the actor playing shang chi having made some waves uh, in defense of treatment for pedophiles but i cut it for both time and just because it got too squicky for me odell continues one of my faults is i would not be good at keeping myself from curb stomping that filmmaker given the wildly unlikely opportunity plus he's really tiny yes yes like sting i'm tantric that one there was a time when that song was inescapable on certain youth oriented radio stations heavy sigh rolls walker into nursing home randy caldwell wrote here's a bit about the special effects from shang chi my quick google search revealed two things one fin fang foom often wears purple shorts or speedos but normally does not wear rings or other jewelry fin fang foom might even be nude sometimes hey randy you don't necessarily know where the rings are being held number two the star of the movie debunked any fin fang foom appearance in june by the way i have not seen the movie i'll wait for the blu-ray other than things i've heard on
on YouTube over the past few months or year. Take your pick. Today was the first I looked at any press stuff for the movie, just reading the title from Google Images. Mac replied, Making the rings be dragon rings would obviously be an MCU thing, but it would explain the Sonic the Hedgehog sized rings. Two, I wasn't really consuming Shang-Chi press junket material. Maybe I should have. Shinji70 wrote, Great podcast. My main thing is I think the rings in the comics look kind of goofy. The rings being bangles on the arms look way cooler, especially on Win Woo's suit when he kills the gang and on his final outfit. And then finally, Kichi Baker added on the Eternals movie, streamed it, fell asleep no less than twice. I think I finished it, but I'm not interested enough to watch it again to be sure. And finally, the Merry Marvel Marching Society. 21st Century Boys, 108 Sage, Aim Collectibles, AJ Shadow, Anthony, Truth, Justice, and a Better Tomorrow S, Chris Dunford, Chris Lydon, Del Dracula, Doc Strain, Ed Moore, Eugene R. Hendricks, The Hammer Strikes, Random Geeky Stuff, History of Comics on Film, Hulkling, Hashtag Get Vaxxed, Hashtag Wear a Mask, Hashtag BLM, I Was Joe Is, Jason Stick to Venable, Jenna Reagan, Jerry Hyde, King Size Comics, Giant Size Fun Podcast, Marvel Universe Online Project, Randy Caldwell, Richard Field, Sean McLaughlin, Too Dangerous for a Girl, and Resurrections, the Warlock and Thanos Podcast. The Marvel Superheroes Podcast is in no way affiliated with or endorsed by Marvel Entertainment. All characters mentioned and audio clips employed are believed covered under fair use, with no infringement intended against their copyright holders. Views expressed in this podcast are assumed legitimate, truthful, and solely possessed by the speaker. We managed to get through the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> Look at that. Six, <laughs> six properties in 90 minutes. You know? Love it. Yeah. Love it. I want to watch Eternals now. No, I, I would recommend no, you it. really don't. I, 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 like, I would recommend it. No, I would no. watch it before I'd watch Shang-Chi again. I would watch Shang-Chi before oh, Eternals. Oh, hell no. I, I, it's, first, I just of all, first of all, all over it's Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. It's Shang-Chi. Okay. Shang-Chi. I'm sorry. I'm old school. I, I, I grew up at a time where we didn't you know, know how to pronounce the name. talking about this? That I saw an article that Aquafina addressed her. Yeah, I saw that. What was it called again? Black... Well, she's basically... she. She's playing fucking uh, Chris Turner in the fucking movie anyway. Chris you know, that's, Turner. Or, or, Chris, Tucker. Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. Like Chris, so yeah, she she's she's Chong. She's Chris Tucker. You know, it's, well, that's Chris Tucker's stunt double. It's Chris Turner. <laughs> Chris Turner. <laughs> but no, no. But it was in some other movie that she did that. Uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all she's always done but kind she, of an no, Afrocentric like, thing. I'm still learning. Which she's just. Oh, we're not uh, no, addressing no, no, Aquafina. It's, it's that like. She, she doesn't know, you know. I mean, I, I, this is no, I thing. noticed that there this a lot is of people. Un, in my opinion, this is an uncancelable offense, which is everybody's just trying to find something to cancel somebody with. Mm-hmm. Uncancelable offense. She was playing somebody from Brooklyn. This is what, I, and this, okay, you know what? This may not want to make a podcast. I find this too. And I'm not trying to say that there's an appropriation of white culture too, because sometimes <laughs> there. But you're, yeah, stick with me here. People think that, like, if you're in the South and you're doing something in New Orleans, that it's like a black thing. And I think even black people think that sometimes. Like, and, no, no, no. no and, and no, here's the example. So remember when Adrian Peterson beat his kid with a switch really bad and they found Adrian Peterson, the football player from like Sealy, Texas or whatever, uh, or around that area? He like beat the shit out of his kid with a switch, right? And another professional basketball player who shall remain nameless, or I should say a professional basketball player because Adrian Peterson's a football player, was just like, they just don't understand like African American culture. And I'm like, African American culture? Southern culture. Switches is Southern culture. Yeah. Okay. That's, I had to go pick a switch when my grandmother got mad at me and I'm as white as fuck. Okay. I, t- I took the belt personally, but you know. Right. I had to go, it, we had switch, we had a fucking switch tree or we whatever got, in the backyard. Yeah. We got the chunkla. Yeah. Or, right. Okay. It's, it's, Southern culture, okay? Yeah. It's not just... So, uh, I think if you're in Brooklyn and you talk like you're in Brooklyn, it's not talking black. You talk like you're from Brooklyn. Now, she's not from Brooklyn and she was trying to do a Brooklyn accent and people took it as she was being black. I think that's a little... Eh. I, I haven't seen enough of the movies to know that. God I've damn heard... it, Neil Young, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Set my goddamn ring cam off. Uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm really tired of hearing about the word ghetto when Jewish people were in the ghetto long before black people were in a fucking ghetto. Okay, so you don't fucking get to own the term Neil ghetto. Young? Well, all right. He kicked the door down on that Jesus. one like Kool-Aid man. It's better oh, to yeah. burn out than fade away, you <laughs> dumbass. It's one thing if you're using it as an adjective, but you don't fucking own that word. You didn't, that, that word wasn't even fucking invented for you, so sorry. They've got another word. <laughs> they don't need to take another word. Yeah. That's what you're trying to say. I just heard Elvis singing, in the ghetto. In the ghetto. In the ghetto. And his mama died. And his mama cried. Cried. She died or she, she cried? She cried. Oh, shit. In the ghetto. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs>